drops fell from the sky onto the ground. Among the apartment buildings, a lonely rat was sitting on a trash can. Someone stepped into the puddle and splashes of water scattered everywhere. It was a girl who was dragging her friend along. She turned around at her tired look and thought that she had to hold out and she would definitely save her, Yao Guan. Two men ran after them with firearms in their hands and shouted to her, where was she running? She was trapped next to a brick wall. She stopped among these walls and thought that this was terrible because she was at a dead end. Drops of rain flowed from her body and behind her came sounds from a person who came closer. She was dumbfounded and wondered, does she need to climb up? Her face trembled with fear and with a sharp movement of her leg, she screamed for someone to die. A guy who was wearing a bright red robe with a wide chain around his neck grabbed her by the leg and told her that he wouldn't lift his legs high in such a skirt. She jumped away from him and screamed angrily, who is he anyway? He came closer with incredibly fast speed, ended up near her face, and she wondered in surprise how he got here so quickly. He stroked the Guan's face and said he had finally found her. Three thousand years. Yao Guang, now no one will dare to hurt her. The girl was dumbfounded and quickly turned the Guan away from his hands and screamed that he was a freak. She won't let him bully her even if she has to die. He looked at her in bewilderment and shouted back that in the year when the ten shamans of the great Lingshan Mountain scattered around the world, chaos began. Who would have thought that descendants would end up this way? The girl asked in a trembling voice how he knew this. Her past, who is he? Behind them a group of people appeared who laughed loudly and shouted to them, have they reached them yet? In the center of this company stood a broad-shouldered man with a weapon in his hands, like his partners wearing dark glasses around him. One of them took off his glasses and, with a cigarette in his mouth, shouted that they had been running all this time. The guy raised his hand up, created a magical glow, and asked who are they to threaten his Yao Guan. The guys pointed their guns at him and started making shots and shouting that the boy was crazy. Let him taste their bullets and die. The guy swiped his finger, closed his eyes, and a moment later an incredibly powerful glow struck through their bodies, and they screamed loudly in pain and horror. Their pistols fell to the ground, and they were destroyed. The girl asked him the question again, who is he? At that very moment, she thought, this is the power of Su Keiwei from the ancient legend of Daoju Palace, isn't it so? He reached out to her with his hands and asked if she wanted to know this. In this case, he will tell her everything. He touched his finger to her forehead, and a magical glow began to appear from his finger and bright circles began to appear. The girl's body also glowed yellow and her eyes began to close. He has many names in the multiverse. Some call him the Great Immortal Sage, others the Lord of Chaos, and some the God of the Forests. Well, she can call him Lin Fei. She fell to her knees in front of him, bowed and said, Let him allow her to introduce herself. She is a descendant of the Shaman of Mount Lingxin Wu Malin. He extended his hand, and with this movement lifted the unconscious body of the Guan, brought her closer to him in his arms, and began to pull out the magical green drops from her head. When he saw this, he wondered, is this spider venom? Was she poisoned? He immediately directed it straight at the wall, causing the drops to begin to roll down and emit smoke, and he said with a menacing look that he would never have thought that those whom he once saved would dare to touch his wife. If this is really the case, then he will destroy absolutely their entire family. Day 2 Jia Family Estate Guan woke up in bed and wondered if she was really in her bedroom. Didn't her pursuers kill her? Exactly, Malin. She jumped out of bed, looked around and screamed in fear, pray, is she okay? Those people, Fei, who was in the room with her and was holding a bottle of alcoholic drink, said without turning to her that he saw her underwear. She covered herself with a robe and shouted in embarrassment, who is he? Where did he come from in her house? He must leave here now, otherwise she will call the police. At that moment, a Guan came into her room and screamed that there was no need to do this because this gentleman saved them and he also neutralized the poison in her body. She covered herself with a blanket and asked again, Can we then ask this benefactor to leave the room? She needs to change her clothes. At that very moment she began to think, so young, how could he recognize the poison? He will also demand compensation. Fei created a green glow in his hand and looked at it and thought about it. When the door was slammed behind him, Yao Guang's memory has not yet fully recovered, and she does not recognize him. Okay, this takes time. Now he needs to find the poisoner. When he went outside, he continued his thoughts, the Wangju spider venom, when a man named King Yunchen from the D-Tribe prayed at his door for three days, asking to save the clan from destruction, he gave him the Wangju spider. He didn't think that this poison would be used to poison his wife. 
When he arrived at the King Corporation, he thought, the Dee people founded the King Clan and also have common property with the Bai Clan. They all opened their own companies in Chengdu. He was stopped by a man in uniform and shouted, waving his arms, Who is it here? This is a King Clan Corporation, no outsiders allowed. Fei very quickly walked past him and said after him that he had no personal accounts with him, so he would not touch him. The guard didn't understand how he was able to rush past him so quickly. The security guard sitting near the computers where data from the cameras was shown immediately began shouting into the radio that strangers had entered the elevator and he wanted to go up. They must stop him. He arrived on the 46th floor and at the exit of the elevator doors, two guards appeared in front of him. One of the guys used a stun gun and screamed discharge, but the fairy looked at him menacingly and told him to back off, and a moment later the guys were thrown in different directions by his blow. One of them pressed himself against the wall and asked in a trembling voice, Is he even human? Fay approached one of the rooms and a girl with green hair, sitting on a chair at the table, shouted to him with a frown, Who is he? Who gave him permission to enter? He should get out of here. Fay sat down on the chair opposite her and asked if she knew the Wangju poison. She reached for the gun attached under the table and said that she didn't know what he was talking about and he should get out of here. With a thoughtful expression on his face, he answered her, Dee people still exist only thanks to the spider Wangju. He doesn't think that Dee's descendants might not know about the poison. King Yunchen must be rolling over in his grave. The girl jumped up from her seat, pointed a gun at him, and shouted that he was an arrogant man who was he anyway to defame the name and her ancestor. He replied mockingly, she should be glad to belong to the Dee people, otherwise with such behavior there would be nothing left of the clan. She asked again, while her hand was shaking, does he think that she won't shoot? At that moment, a man approached her, grabbed the gun from her hands, and shouted at him that he was impudent. The girl shouted to him, Dad, he came just in time. This person has defamed Yunchen's name. The man began to bow at his feet and shouted, Great Lin, he must allow him to introduce himself, the head of the king family, King Fen. The girl was surprised by his behavior and shouted at him to get up from his knees. He looked at her and replied, she should come here and bow to the Great Ling. She looked at him, stunned, after which the menacing woman told him, Dad, they don't bow down to just anyone. Only as a sign of respect for ancestors can this happen. Who is he for her to kneel before him? No, she won't do that. She turned around and left the office, and her father shouted at her that she was a very harmful girl. Fei closed her eyes and asked, okay, he should get up first, but what's going on with the Wanju spider now? He got up from his seat and said, His daughter has been spoiled since childhood and does not even know about his existence. Please, he must not take this the wrong way. As for the spider, all this time it was in the underground cave of Yumian. Only last year during worship they no longer found it, which means that it fell into the hands of the Bai family. His expression changed to a terrifying one and he shouted the question, If the D people couldn't control the spider, how could others do it? Fei asked him, What about the sacrifice ring? Fen shouted the question, can the sacrifice ring be controlled by the spider? The ring was given to Ming Yu's youngest son, some time ago he was found unconscious. The Bai and Fen families asked him to borrow the ring, saying that they wanted to make a sacrifice to their ancestors. He didn't even think they would use it this way. But why would they take control of the spider? Fei smiled and answered, the opportunity to overthrow the clan, which they had been chasing there for almost 4,000 years, is this a bad motive? Fen expressed anger on his face and said, It turns out that his son Ming Yu became an idiot because of them. He again bowed to the floor in front of the fairies and shouted to him, Sir, he asks for help to save his son. He has been in a poison state for more than seven months. Fei told him that the poison had been in effect for too long and had already reached the soul. Ordinary people can't stand this, but even if he does, there's still a chance. Fen handed him an envelope and said in a trembling voice, but these are not simple medicines that can be bought at a pharmacy, but miracle cures. Fei went to the exit of the office and asked him to call him as soon as he could collect all the ingredients. After some time, a man with a gray beard named Hua Ming, who is a healer, took the woman's hand and said, the poison was completely neutralized. Apparently his medication helped. Guan thanked him for the fact that thanks to him she came back to life. Mullen, standing at her side, thought that this was not so because it was the Great One who saved her. Guan also spoke out, There is eighty million on the card, and he should take it, please. Ming took it back and answered her well. At that very moment, he thought that his medicine was absolutely useless against the Wangju poison, but because of this mistake, his son would have money. 
Malin whispered in Guan's ear, in truth, his medicine is not. But before she could finish speaking, Ming rose from his seat and created magical powers around himself and shouted to her, Does she doubt his abilities? Her face turned pale, and she answered with fear, Of course it's not so. Meanwhile, Fei went outside and was walking among the tall buildings. While walking he heard the phone ringing and took it, asking what is she saying. He got angry and screamed, no one dares to deceive his wife for money, and he will pay for it all. He grabbed his phone in anger and thought, Dr. Hua Ming, he could have taken this money if he respected her wife. But he dared to deceive her, and he must die. Does Mr. Ganao and Jai have terminal liver cancer? Metastases have spread to the bones, and even the Almighty is unlikely to save him. Jing Changwei walked up to Zhang Jinwujia and said, Healer Hua, he heard the girl say that he saved her from serious poisoning. He brought his father to see him. He was able to cure a man from poisoning with the strongest poison on earth. Is nothing really going to help him? The healer had not yet had time to answer anything when suddenly someone shouted to them from afar of course he would not help him. Everyone turned towards the Fei who approached them and spoke because he knows nothing about Wanju poison. A man with a mustache in a blue suit shouted to drive away this psychopath who was disturbing the doctor and should get out of here. Two guys began to carry out this order and ran towards him with their fists. But the fairy himself was so easily able to dodge their attacks that one collision of fingers with their hands threw them aside with injuries. The guys began to tremble and, looking at their wounds, groaned in pain. The man and the healer were very surprised by what was happening and were dumbfounded. Min asked the question, who is he who dared to smash his healing house to smithereens? He will make him pay for everything. Fei grabbed the back of the chair and pushed it away, saying, You can't ask for compensation for ill-gotten gains. The healer became wary and Fei continued to say that in that year Hua could become a brilliant doctor, a new luminary in the art of healing, and begin a dynasty of artificial doctors. Who would have thought that the descendants of the Hua family would be so immoral and start profiting from this? Today he has nothing to do, so he will cleanse his family. He sat down on the chair in a comfortable, relaxed position and looked at him dirty. A guy named Hua Cheng jumped out in front of the healer and started screaming, What kind of nonsense is he talking about? He still dares to slander his grandfather. If he doesn't leave here now, he'll call the police. Zhang Jin intervened in this conversation and, addressing him as a young man, asked if he even knew who he was. In one word, it can destroy his entire life. Fei replied, of course, he knows who he is. He is the grandfather of his future daughter-in-law. Zhang Jin looked at him questioningly and could not answer anything, when suddenly Fei approached him closely, grabbed his hand, felt his pulse on his hand and said, He cannot cure liver cancer, but for him it costs nothing. Cheng began to shout with dissatisfaction, pointing his finger at him, but he's a real charlatan. He must prove he is right. Fei pulled back his hand and a moment later, a thing with hieroglyphs on it fell to the ground. He began to move his fingers and control this object, from which sharp tools fell and began to pierce the body of Zhang Jin, who looked at it in stupefaction. Ming also became wary and said in a trembling voice, This is the main method. This is the method from the legends. Hua's grandfather said that he saw a sage use it. Zhang Jin suddenly began coughing something black and bent to the ground. Chong Wei grabbed his father and asked with alertness how he was feeling. Fei, who continued to operate these needles, said, These are cancer cells coming out, and there is no need to be afraid of this. The doctor should check his pulse. Ming came closer to Zhang Jin and said that he felt better. Terminal liver cancer cured. He became very wary and shouted, Is this a joke? His grandson was also surprised by what was happening and asked again if he really succeeded. Zhang Jin turned to him, saying that he thanks him for saving his life. Fei secretly looked at him and said, Dr. Hua, and now he must show them how to neutralize the Wangju poison. Creating a magical light with his hands, he directed it towards Min's grandson, who turned to him in fear and caught his trembling body due to the poison that had entered inside. The guy began to scream loudly, and Min screamed in fear that it was poison. He said in a trembling voice, and with tears in his eyes that he could not cope with this poison, he simply could not do it. He was overcome by greed. He begs to let his grandson go. This is his mistake, and he wanted to profit from the healing of a young girl. He is not able to neutralize the Wangju poison. Fei pointed his hand in his direction and snatched the object. With a black card in his hand, he turned in the opposite direction and said that doctors should work for the benefit of people, but if they converge on this path, what will remain of this world? Next time he won't get away with it so easily. 
he turned to Chun Wei, come closer to him, and putting the object in his hands, he said that he asked him to give this to Guan and no longer call people crazy. Chun Wei smiled and replied that it was him. Let him have his business card. Old man Zhang Jin asked him, Is this a lot? If it's not enough, they have more? Fei grabbed the business card and said, Then he himself will give it to her. Min, who continued to hold his grandson's hand, said that he did not know how he knew this healing technique. Maybe he met the sage his ancestor spoke about. Fei turned around and answered him that he was the sage. Ming leaned over sharply and shouted that he was asking for an excuse for the disrespectful Hua Ming. Fei looked at the business card and wondered, business card? Even though he is Yao Guang's father, he behaved nobly. After that, he spoke out, Lin Fei. Chun Wei was delighted by his action and shouted to his father that he took the card. From his words, it became clear that he had a special relationship with Yao Guang. She was able to attract the attention of such a respectful person. Zhang Jin smiled and said, If he becomes the son-in-law of their family, it will be very great. Jai Corporation. Fei went inside the building again and, passing by the reception desk, thought, Yao Guang should be in the company now. Just then he will come in and give the card to her. Suddenly, he heard Malin start screaming loudly. Mr. Zivlin Fei arrived just in time. Someone is bothering her. At that moment, a fair-haired guy entered the room and asked, Is she busy? He became embarrassed and grabbed the back of her chair and said that he wanted to invite her to dinner. Will she receive such an honor? She removed her hands away from him and said that she was afraid that she would not be able to do this. She had business in the evening. At this moment, she immediately wondered if this idiot was trying to get her attention. Isn't the girls he seduced inside the company enough for him? Fei entered the room and asked Guan if she had free time. She was wary and very embarrassed that he again called her by name. The company employee looked at her in surprise and asked Fei with a dissatisfied expression on her face, What department did he come from? What position does he have? Why doesn't he wear his badge during working hours? Moreover, he dares to call Director Jai by name. She blushed even more when the Fei approached her and asked if they could have dinner after work today. The guy shouted at him in rage, was he really deaf? Can't he hear what he's saying? Where did he even come from? The guard should throw him out of here. The guards entered the room and, flexing their fists, said that they had heard the order, but moments later they were attacked by fairy forces. One of them fell face first onto the floor, and the other hit his back against the wall. Fei made this movement with his legs, and the fair-haired guy was very scared for himself, unable to say anything, when Fei got closer to him and swung his hand at him. At that moment he was simply dumbfounded, and Fei gave him an incredibly strong slap in the face, from which caused the guy to bleed from his mouth and fall to the floor. His cheek turned red, he grabbed it with his hand and shouted, Did he dare to hit him? He will definitely call Uncle Jai and everything will be over with him. Fei reached into the pocket of his outerwear and asked again, right? And he was just about to call Chun Wei. So he will ask why they left such a terrible person in the company. He threw a business card in the guy's face. He turned around and thought about it when he saw it. A purple gold business card. Her uncle Jai gives only to those who are more influential than himself. Who is he anyway? The guy grabbed his head and continued to say, trembling, that it means he is an honorable guest here. This means he was stupid. Fei shouted at him to leave here, and he rushed to run in the other direction, thinking about where he even came from. No matter where he comes from, it cannot be ignored that he can recruit the head of the company just like that. A five-star hotel Yuzhlan. A frightened Guan entered the building and looked around and asked, Will they be here already? Isn't it possible to eat in a simple cafe? Fei answered her that there was nothing to worry about, because it was only a few thousand yuan. She looked at the fairy and thought, He is dressed like a homeless person, and this is the only way he throws money away. Maybe he is one of the golden youth, although he helped her so much and she just had dinner with him. When they sat down at the table, Fei said that this was the money that Hua Ming got by deception and he was returning it to her. He handed her the card and she wondered if he knew her father. How did he take this card? She has to give it back. Fei replied that he saw him once and Nguyen, turning away, wondered in her mind, he saw him only once and already received his business card and became one of the honored guests of the companies. She continued to be thoughtful and examine her surroundings, while the Fei chose dishes from the menu. While he was flipping through the pages, he decided to tell her that he cured her grandfather of liver cancer. She was dumbfounded by what she heard. After dinner, the cry of Guan was heard in the Jai family estate, Dad, Mom, Grandpa, why do they all come out? Zhang Jin shouted, Great healer Lin. Fei tell him that he shouldn't have met them like that. 
He reached out with his hands towards him, and Guan wondered in bewilderment what was going on here. Zhang Jin grabbed his hand and thanked him again for curing his cancer. He is interested in the art of tea and can offer him a cup of tea. Guan turned to her father and, pointing her finger at Fei, agreed that they had all been deceived. He really couldn't have healed his grandfather, could he? Zhu Wei replied that it was true. What is her relationship with the Dr. Lin? Is he chasing her, or is she running after him? She became embarrassed and told him not to invent anything because he was Malin's friend. The father looked puzzled at her embarrassed expression and said, So that means he is Malin's friend. Is his daughter really inferior to her in some way? After some time, night fell and around the Jai estate, there were many guys in hoods with knives who surrounded the estate. Fei realized that there were six of them and, approaching the exit door, said that he wanted to go and get some air. Guan, who was standing with a plate of fruit in her hands, looked at him in bewilderment and did not answer. When he went outside, he looked around and suddenly guys began to attack him one after another with sharp knives, the blades of which sparkled. He grinned, looked carefully in front of him and pulled out his hand, starting to produce magical waves that lifted the guys up and unwound them in different directions. In an empty moment, all that was left of these guys were body parts scattered everywhere. One of them was left standing in shock when he saw the bloody severed finger of his partner flying towards him. His whole body trembled, and he pulled out a dagger in front of him and said in a trembling voice not to approach him and not to approach him in any way. Fei, who was already standing opposite, menacingly asked him who sent them here. He started shouting that they are night killers, they work for money, and never reveal the name of the customer. Fei raised his hand up and said, in this case he can be killed. A bright flash of light formed behind him and Mullen, who went outside with the Jai family, said, Night killers, these are the largest organizations of hired killers in the country. She uttered these words against the pillar in horror and bewilderment, while the others stood in the same stunned state behind him. After some time, an unknown number called on the phone and drops of blood rolled right onto it. Moline picked up the phone from the ground and handed it to Fei, saying that it was the killer's phone. He picked up the phone and was asked again, was the matter settled? He replied that he dealt with his opponents while the entire team of killers lay in a pool of their blood. And they asked him who he was. Does he even know what he will pay if he goes against the night killers? He brought the phone closer to his mouth and said that he didn't need to know who he was. If he doesn't want him to destroy his company, he should stay away from him. After these words, he threw the phone aside and screamed and disappeared, snapped his fingers and all the dead guys began to burst into flames. While Malin watched the flames in bewilderment, Faye came closer and asked, Is she a known night killer? She replied that this was the largest group of contract killers in China. They say that among them there are many masters of ancient martial arts, they have three leaders, their call signs are Black Rose, Datura, and Spider Lily. Fei thought for a moment, scratched his chin and said, The largest group of hired killers, aren't they followers of Jing Zong? The youngest son of one of the five greatest emperors, Xuan Zhu, captured a layer of natural spirit and turned into a werewolf. Later he founded the first group of mercenaries in history called Jing Zong, a remote area of Chengdu city. Someone shouted that she had never received such threats. The girl sat in a revealing suit on the table and looked at the phone screen and asked who he even was. This girl is the same Black Rose from the Night Killers. She continued to look at the phone screen and said, Failed the task twice. Well, let the psycho deal with this. Nightmare knows how to torture its victims. Suddenly, a loud scream was heard behind her and someone asked, Boss, doesn't she even allow people to rest? She replied that she was giving two million. The guy with blood stains on his cheek asked again, She says who needs to be removed. Meanwhile, the mug fell and broke into pieces with a crash. A blonde guy from the company turned to the secretary and shouted to her, Is she sure that this Lin Fei has nothing at all? Is he really a simple orphan? The girl adjusted her glasses and answered with confidence, Yes, the head of the Han. He crossed his arms angrily and wondered if there was nothing on him. Had Jai Zhongwei really hired him as a bodyguard? Exactly. Just recently, they tried to kill the Guan, so he strengthened her defense. He jumped up and hit the table with his fist and shouted, Lin Fei, some bodyguard decided to compete with him. He will destroy him. The next morning, Fei sat in the room at the table and wrote out bright orange papers, thinking that first he would convey the spell to Zhang Daoling, he would definitely not understand. Why is it so hard to write this? Gao, he must have become a celestial being like the others quite early. After some time, he found himself next to the Zhang Jin and said, This is a protective amulet, and he drew it himself. 
This will protect him from threats, and he is afraid that someone wants to harm him. Zhang Jin took hold of the item and put it to his chest with a smile. Guan did the same and wondered with bewilderment, what kind of amulet is this? Fei asked her to wear it, and then it would protect her. When he went outside, he wondered where he should start the investigation. Shouldn't he get a car first? At that same moment, a semi-truck appeared in front of him, and he looked at it questioningly. Several pumped-up and menacing-looking guys came out from there. One of them lit a cigarette and shouted to him, stopping in front of him, Is he the guy named Lin Fei? Fei asked him again, Was he sent by the free can? He thought he was much smarter. The man got angry and shouted at him, pointing his partner's finger in his direction, This is the same Lin Fei. For each blow with a knife, they will give him five hundred. They should make a chop out of him. Fei was in a relaxed state and looked at him and said, Which means they valued him so much. Insects are ready to carry out any order. He stamped his foot on the ground, and a lot of bright magical sparks came from his foot, which made the guys fly to the side, and they dropped their knives. Fei immediately moved to attack one after another and kick them, his blows causing flashes of light. One of the threatening guys was attacked and pinned to the car, and when he saw a fairy's leg stuck into the wall to his left, which crushed the body of the car into small pieces, he said what a freak he was. Is he even human? After some time, the police arrived at the scene and several police cars surrounded the car of the attacking guys. Fei turned around and said, They are all fake, but the police are real. The police pulled out a firearm and pointed it towards Fei, who reached into his pocket, but one of the police shouted at him to stand still and raise his hands. He dialed the number on the phone and said to tell Mr. Zhang that among his people, there was a corrupt rat who was causing Lin Fei some discomfort. After these words, he put the phone back while someone asked him in response, What? What kind of Mr. Zhang is this? Who goes around with that last name? Is it really the head of department? The policeman pointed his finger in the direction of the fairy and shouted at him, Deliberate harm to health. They are taking him away. This man is the commander of the Qingyang District Police, Liu Shenghao. When they arrived at the police station, one of the guys approached Fei, touched him on the shoulder, and said that he knew that he was just a victim, but he himself did not understand why the foreman decided to grab him. Fei said that he was a good person and asked what his name was. The guy answered him that he needs to think better about himself, since this is the main thing now. Meanwhile, the policeman was watching Fei and the employee leaving and told the hand director on the phone that Fei had been captured by them. He can be sure that they will make sure that he will not leave here soon. Han was happy about this and said, Fei, this is the end of his confrontation with him. Meanwhile, the Chengdu police received a message, Chief Zhang, a strange call just came in. The girl went to the office of the head of the police department named Zhang Qianling and told him that he introduced himself as Lin Fei and said that among their subordinates there was a bribe taker who had arrested him. Qianling replied that he said not to disturb him during meetings. Suddenly he slammed his fist on the table and shouted to wait, asking again who said that. Lin Fei, what kind of idiot wanted to die? Qingyang District Prison. Fei was in a cage, handcuffed. The policeman approached him and said that he would try to get a fair investigation, but now he was forced to sit here. Fei looked to the side, and his cellmate asked him if he was new. The man in question is a prison leader named Hai. He saw his handcuffs and spoke. They led him in handcuffs and did not even intimidate them. They were given to understand that they must greet him properly. This is how they say hello to him. Fei pretended to clean his ears and asked again, What? Hai got up from his seat, stretched his fists, and said that he wanted to say that everyone was sitting here for a reason, so he should not be surprised at their insidiousness. At that moment, Fei made a sharp movement and, accelerating, hit Hai right in the face with both hands, and he screamed in pain and fell to the ground. He was picked up by the surrounding guys, and Fei said that he hoped that they, too, understood that they were paying for their cruelty. A loud scream began to be heard from one cell, while a policeman around the corner was telling the hand director on the phone that Lin Fei was already in the cell, and the guys were teaching him to be smart. He doesn't have to worry about what's happening, he'll make sure that he's treated right in his cell. Meanwhile, the police car was moving at incredible speed and Chen Ling shouted to drive faster. How long has he been in leadership positions? He has never seen such idiots. The driver told him that he should calm down and then asked the question, Who is this Lin Fei, since he is so worried about him? Qian Ling began to shout back that it was not he who was bothering him, but Liu Shenhao. His life is in danger. Meanwhile, inside the police station, one of the employees handed over to his subordinate to now fill out the crime with Lin Fei, 
because he needs to lend it to the employees above. The guy started shouting in surprise, Chief Liu, it's immediately clear from those people that they are idiots. Their words cannot be trusted. He continued screaming and banging on the tablet, saying that he was guilty and that meant he was. What is he saying here? Does he really want to become an accomplice? The guy turned his face back and tried to say something, when suddenly Chanling burst into their office, opened the door with his foot and shouted Liu Shanghao, is he tired of living? He was dumbfounded and asked a question, Chief Zhang, how did he end up here? What did he do? He doesn't seek death. Chanling pointed his finger at him and continued to shout, did he talk to the dark team and concoct a case against the person? What was he even thinking about? They must catch him. The police should stand guard over the population and not commit robbery against them. Liu was handcuffed and shouted to the boss that he shouldn't do this to him. He made a mistake, but he is not a criminal. Tianling told his subordinate to take him to the detained Lin Fei, who replied that he was carrying out his order. Shen Hao was dumbfounded and wondered, does the boss even know his name? Han Enzi said that he is an ordinary security guard. Before he had time to put him in prison, the boss personally rushed to pull him out. Is this how he treats guards? Let this hand be damned. The junior police officer entered Fei's cell and said to Chan Ling that Fei was placed here. Especially cruel prisoners are sitting here. He spent about half an hour here and is afraid that when suddenly he was dumbfounded by what he saw and shouted in bewilderment what was happening. The beaten guys massaged the body of Fei, who sat in a relaxed state and looked at them menacingly, after which he rose from his seat and said, Zhang, they haven't seen each other for a long time. Tianling looked at him with a smile and thought, during his youth, Great Lin also looked young. Now he is mature, and the sage Lin is still young. This is the sign of a true deity. He bowed and said that they had not seen each other for a long time, sir. His honorable friend made a mistake, for which he will be held accountable to the fullest extent. They will fill out a protocol, after which he will personally compensate for all damage. The surrounding guys who were in prison were stunned by what was happening and wondered in surprise who he even was. This is the main city boss, Han Mansion. Han wondered what was going on with this Liu Shenghao and why was his phone switched off. Does it take him so long to process this security guard? He looked at the phone with a feeling of fear and wariness. Suddenly, he received a notification on his phone that Liu was calling him. He thought that this was the first time his uncle had called him. He answered the call, and they started shouting in response, Han. Does he have any idea how much he has already done? From this day on, he does not dare to raise issues related to fairies. Han moved his hand to the side because of the loud cry of his opponent and said Liu, but he is already just an ordinary security guard. What's wrong with that? He asked him again, what was wrong? Chief Zhang was terribly shocked. He personally tore off Liu Shenghao's police uniform and released the top, and he asked him, what's wrong with this? Han was dumbfounded by what he heard and wondered how this freak without a homeland and a flag got such connections. This is how he found himself in a terrible situation. After some time in the office, Jai Chongwei told the person who knocked to enter. It was a fairy who walked inside and closed the door behind him. Chen Wei got up from his seat and asked what he owed. Fei told him that he could allocate a position for him. Chen Wei looked at him in surprise and thought, This man came to his company, and this is incredible luck. I decided to offer him the position of vice president, and Fei replied that he was not interested. He would like to become the Guan's personal bodyguard. Chen Wei answered him, of course, of course, but to tell the truth, she is not entirely healthy. She suffers from a mild fear of men, and this is a mental disorder for which there is currently no cure. Fei frowned and asked where she got this disease from. Chun Wei replied, when she was nine years old, she was kidnapped. He wanted to pay a ransom for her, but the scoundrel who kidnapped her was not interested in money. That man said that he had finally found the reincarnated ruler of Guan, and for him this was a great achievement, and even 10,000 holy celestials would not be able to interfere with his plan. Suddenly, bright bloody rays began to glow around Fei's body, and Chang Wei fearfully wondered what it was. Is this lust murder? He feels unbearable pressure. He grabbed his head and shouted at him to calm down. He didn't harm the Guan. He has been immortal for 200 million years. His students around the world have been searching for Guan for 3,000 years. But it turns out that one of them had found it a long time ago, and he not only kept it a secret, but also harbored evil intentions. Traitors have only one ending, the general execution of the entire traitor family. Fei asked, did he have any special features? He replied that he was dressed in a black dress down to his toes and was also wearing a mask. In truth, there was nothing special about him. 
Guan was saved only thanks to the excellent protection of Malin's grandfather, who used a shamanic spell to seriously wound the criminal. She sat on the ground, tearful, and after being wounded, he had no choice but to run away. This event became a dark shadow in the heart of the Guanas and also became their eternal fear. If this person comes back again, no one will be able to save their Guan. Fei turned around and said with a menacing look that if he even dared to appear, he would turn him into ashes. Chun Wei bowed to him and shouted after him, Thank you. He will notify the company of his new position. He arrived at the company president's break room and wondered if sooner or later he would still find him, that very man in the mask. He was drinking coffee and saying these words in his mind, until one of the guards in the security department pointed to his boss at the computer screen and shouted, There is some guy in President Jai's break room. The boss waved his hand and shouted, Who is this? For him, the rules are not written. They should go there and kick him out. The men are the head of the security department named Lu Lung. Another subordinate told the boss that this was the same guy who beat the hand leader. Lung said, it seems that with the help of this guy, he will be able to get a promotion. Since he offended the head of Han, he will not be gentle with him either. Han Enzi was sitting on the sofa when he received a call. He took the phone and said hello to Uncle Luo, but he immediately yelled at him, does he have any idea how much noise he made? From now on, he should not even dare to mention Lin Fei's name. At the same time, two men led by Liu Long ran into the restroom and stood threateningly near Fei. Long, throwing his baton to his side, shouted, He, the freak, still dares to sit in the break room and drink coffee after what he did to the head of Han. He won't be well today. But he, quite calmly watching the steam emanating from the hot drink, asked, Well, why is he running into trouble? Is he tired of living? Then Liu Long screamed even louder, You freak. He still dares to be arrogant. He must get up immediately. Now he will teach him a lesson. But just as the other two men were heading towards him, a loud order to stop came from behind. Lun, turning around, exclaimed in surprise, Leader. He approached Inky, who was shaking all over, and his eyebrows were drawn to the bridge of his nose. But without noticing this state, Liu Long again pointed his finger at Lin Fei and said, Leader Han is just in time. This idiot was so arrogant that he decided to sneak into the management break room. But it seems this guy didn't want to poison him. At the same moment, he thinks that he will help the leader take revenge. But the next moment, Han Enzi gives him a nice slap in the face with a dissatisfied cry. But how dare he mistake a noble man for a criminal? Lun, rubbing the bruise, asked again Lin. Enzi grabbed him by the hair and, bowing with him, turned to Fei. This is his mistake. He did not teach these people the correct behavior and asks for forgiveness for this. Liu Long at this moment only curses in pain and bewilderment. But Lin Fei, with a gesture showing him that everything was in order, noted that it was okay, they were free. Han Enzi immediately kicked the men out of the office shouting, They must get out of here. Next time he'll fire them all. Then, turning to Fei, he embarrassedly remarked that these people were just guards. You shouldn't hold a grudge against them. At first he also showed disrespectful behavior out of ignorance. But he hopes that Lin Fei will forgive him. He looked at him displeased and clarified, so he's apologizing. Does he apologize while standing? Enzi, without hesitating for a second, bows 90 degrees and says, he asks for forgiveness once again. But when silence follows in response, he hesitates a little, but soon falls to the floor and repeats, touching his forehead, he sincerely asks for forgiveness. Fei doesn't show complete satisfaction, but nevertheless condescendingly notes, okay, he can be free. Han Enzi gets up with relief and says that he is very grateful. Leaving the room, Enzi wipes his sweaty forehead and thinks, he has finally sorted out this matter. What kind of person is this? Leader Zhang himself got hold of him with one phone call. If he wants, he can send his entire family to prison. Did he just imagine or not that he was looking at him like he was looking at an insect? Life is in full swing near multi-story buildings. People relax, sitting at the tables of street cafes and just walking around a small square. Two girls, passing by one of the cars in the parking lot, exclaim enthusiastically, there is such a handsome guy in front. His luxury car costs at least three million. I wonder who he's waiting for. She's already so jealous of her. Song Hao glances nervously at the watch dial and holds a large bouquet of red roses in his hand. His colleague Meng Ji, sitting in the car, clarifies that if he wants to meet a girl, maybe he'll just call her. But he, leaning on the car door, explains that Yao Guang is a special girl. He doesn't understand women at all. Finally, she comes out of the building and chats cheerfully with Wu Malin about something, while Lin Fei silently follows them. 
Hao, just seeing Guan, exclaims enthusiastically, it's her. Afterwards, coming up and handing her a gorgeous gift, he says that he heard that she was seriously ill. He came to visit her. And he also wants to invite her to a restaurant. What will she say to this? But she, putting one hand forward in a negative gesture, notes that it seems that this cannot be done. Her parents are waiting for her at home. She then turns to Malin and asks her to help her with Song Hao's gift. She immediately takes the bouquet from his hands and thanks him for his concern and for the flowers. He does not despair and clarifies, then maybe they can visit the Gongju Club tomorrow. Their companies have a common project. He thinks this is a great chance to discuss everything. Gao Guang replies thoughtfully, okay. If he doesn't mind, then they can go. At that same moment, she simply understands that their company has common affairs with him. She cannot simply dismiss him. But when they leave, Moline clarifies, what should she do with the flowers? Yao Guang, without hesitation, coldly replies that she can throw it away. Hao, looking after her with hatred, thinks she's crazy. How can she be so arrogant with him? The day will come, she will run after him like a submissive dog. The next day, the weather was beautiful and sunny, and the Gongju Club was quiet and deserted. Jai Yao Guang, pulling the bowstring, takes aim and turning to Lin Fei asks him to see if her position is correct. He briefly answers no. Hearing this, she lowers her bow and looking at him with displeasure wants to scold him somehow, but still falls silent. Song Hao, sitting surrounded by his guard and Meng Ji, lights a cigarette and wonders who it is. Yesterday, he also hung around her. The man frowns and replies that he doesn't know, but this guy came with Yao Guang early in the morning. He has one guess about this. He doesn't have time to finish when Hao interrupts him and completes his thought, that is, he wants to say that they can meet. Then, rising from the white sofa, he throws the cigarette aside and orders the man to find out everything about him. He bows slightly and exclaims he understood everything. Then Song Hao slowly walks towards Fei and, extending his hand for a handshake, introduces himself and explains that he is a friend of Jai Yao Guang. What's his name? He ignores his gesture and replies Lin Fei, he is her bodyguard. Hearing this, Yi gets irritated with laughter and exclaims, the guy is a simple bodyguard, but he wondered where he came from. And how much does she pay him? If he works for him, he will pay the guy three million a month. Then he won't have to do anything. With his appearance, it would be enough for the guard to be obedient around him. With these words, he licks his lips, looking at him with a wild look. Yao Guang, listening to this, crosses his arms in displeasure, thinking in disgust how crazy he is. But how asks in a friendly manner, can he shoot a bow? Maybe they should compete. She immediately runs up to them and, waving her hands negatively, fearfully says that he doesn't know how. Song Hao shouldn't interfere with him. She doesn't have time to finish before Fei replies that he agrees. He doesn't see anything wrong with it. Jai Yao Guang whispers in his ear and, grabbing the hem of his jacket, insists they just want to mock him. Hao has been shooting for many years. He wants to humiliate him. Can't he see it? He is not his rival. Lin Fei explains that he sees everything and understands everything. He hadn't had much practice lately, so he shot a single arrow and hit a three-legged crow. She, hearing this, mentally repeats, three-legged crow. Song Hao, not wanting to hesitate, picks up the bow and announces, okay. They shoot from a distance of 300 meters. The guard, hearing this, perplexedly adjusts his glasses and clarifies 300 meters. Is Hao so confident in his abilities? But the record is 365.8 meters. Meng Ji, who is standing slightly in front of him, grins, don't underestimate him. There was a rumor that he succeeded thanks to his family's connections, but he saw Song Hao's shooting. He is much tougher than they can imagine. Fei, not at all surprised by this, agrees, okay, but Hao shouldn't complain later and can shoot from this distance. He will shoot from 500 meters. When the man hears this, his glasses fly off his head, and he says in shock, 500 meters. Has he gone crazy? What adds to this? Is he sick? But Song Hao, pulling the bowstring, self-confidently notes that the guy knows nothing about the art of archery. He wants to embarrass himself. If so, then he will be happy to help him with this. Two girls who have been watching him all this time are screaming enthusiastically, supporting him. It can't be. How cool. He will succeed. He will now show everything he is capable of. He actually orders by releasing the arrow that you were all looking at it. The man near the target raises the red flag and announces 7th ring, 5th ring, 6th ring, only 19 points. The guard is very happy about this result. This is the level of world competitions. 3 arrows and a total of 19 points. Mengji also gives him a thumbs up and adds, keep it up. 
when Lin Fei shoots an arrow, the blonde behind him furiously reminds him that he wanted to shoot from 500 meters. Song Hao invites him to action with a hand gesture and notes that now it's his turn. Fei takes two arrows and, pulling the bowstring, explains that with three arrows he knocked out only 19 points. Therefore, he will not humiliate Hao and only uses two arrows. Moreover, he will not even peer at the target. The blonde exclaimed dissatisfiedly, Are you kidding me? He's definitely bluffing. Is that possible? The brunette also looked away with dissatisfaction and added, Did he think of hitting Song Hao with just two arrows? He's definitely sick in the head. But Lin Fei, without listening to anyone, still with his eyes closed, releases the bowstring. The first arrow hits right in the center of the target. The second arrow follows exactly after this, and cutting it into two parts, pierces the stand with the target. The girls immediately screamed indignantly, How? How is this possible? Are they dreaming about this? This is a scam. But one of the guys who saw this moment jumped up enthusiastically and shouted that he wanted his autograph. Even the guard, being shocked, still said, This is skill. Trying to comprehend what had happened, Ji noted that this cannot be. Even at world competitions, you cannot see such skill. But Fei returning how his bow sums it up, he knocked out 20 points with two arrows from 500 meters, and Song Hao knocked out 19 points with three arrows from 300 meters. Does he want to compete again? But without waiting for an answer, he leaves Hao, frozen in confusion, and approaching Yao Guan asks what she will have for lunch today, hot pot or Mao Tsai. She experiences the same feelings as the others, so she replies that she doesn't care. Song Hao, seeing this scene, grits his teeth in anger and mentally exclaims, This freak doesn't care about him. Even after changing it, he thinks about what he will eat for lunch. When Meng Ji approaches him, he clenches his fist and exclaims, This guy has crossed all boundaries. He will order people to teach him a lesson. But Hao calms him down and explains that there is no need. The Jai family only seems unattainable, but their products cannot keep up with the market. Without his help, they will go bankrupt very quickly. Jai Yao Guang will beg him, and then they will see how inaccessible she is. After some time, Lin Fei sits with her in a small cafe, which at the moment is almost empty of people. He looks at the phone screen with interest, and after seeing a video of his archery moment, notes that it seems to be popular. Fei then opens the comments and sees that people have written very enthusiastically about him. Is he even human? The guy writes, for the first time in nine years of coaching, men feel insulted. Why did he even pick up the phone while eating? The girl notes that this stranger is gorgeous. With such an appearance, she is ready to take it off right now. He should remind her to text him the number. Video without strangers. Also, someone adds that it was cool. He already said that he is not interested in China, but this guy really attracts him. When Lin Fei looks up from the phone, he sees that Yao Guang is also looking at the phone screen. He wonders, what is she thinking about? She looks very serious. But when he extends his hand to the side, she immediately looks up, embarrassed. Fei excitedly asks what's wrong with her. She notes that Song Hao is clearly angry. He doesn't answer her message and doesn't pick up the phone. They discussed cooperation between their families, but his father wanted her to marry his son, saying that this was the only way he would meet them halfway. After listening to her, Lin Fei suggests that maybe he can help her with something. But Jai Yao Guang blushed and turned to the side and replied that this was not worth doing. He won't be able to help her. At the same moment, she wonders what's wrong with her. Why did she tell him this? Although, he really doesn't help everyone. As evening falls, they return to Jai's family estate, and she happily announces to her mother that she is home. Fei, following her, asks for forgiveness for disturbing her. At this time, the nightmare is watching the house from afar. He thoughtfully notes that he must carefully study the goal for which Black Rose is willing to pay two million. When morning comes, the rays of the bright sun break through the windows into bright and clean rooms. Jai Chongwei, sitting at the table and picking up a cup of coffee, announces to Yao Guang that today they will not visit the Song family together. She agrees, a little confused, okay. Fei also asks if he can go with them too. But Chongwei notes that he doesn't want to bother him. He and his daughter have something to discuss with them about business. After some time, they, dressed in formal suits, leave the house, while they are escorted out by Lin Fei and Wu Malin. Jai Chunwei asks if his daughter knows why the meeting was scheduled. Jai Yao Guang agrees, of course. It's just that she couldn't even think that they would turn out to be so unscrupulous. At the very beginning, they put the corporation under attack to help this family in crisis. So what now? 
his father will become his relative, he will consider him a fool who can be used. Afterwards, she clarifies in a trembling voice, her father is not thinking about marrying her to Song Hao, right? Chang Wei turns around and notes that it is not necessary to go that far. He just wants fruitful cooperation with them. He thinks they should agree. This time its limit is one billion. Yao Guang screams in horror, but his father understands that by offering them a billion in addition to basic cooperation, he is dooming their family to bankruptcy. But he stopped and sighed heavily and said that she was still little and didn't understand anything. Their relationship with Hao is just an excuse. If they don't get rid of the securities, the contracts already signed for new orders will crush their family. But she still asks incredulously, what if this isn't enough for the Song family? In front of the entrance to the Jaya State, on a small platform, Malin, loudly screaming, trains fighting techniques, sharply and clearly waving his hands in the air. Fei, sitting nearby at a small coffee table, holds a cup of tea in her hands and mentally notes, she is only at the very beginning of her development, no wonder she had to run away from that crowd of thugs. Afterwards, he instantly approaches her and says that he remembers how her grandfather succeeded in protecting Yao Guang, so he will also help her with something. Lin Fei touches her forehead with the index finger of his right hand and says, This is the secret technique of Lin Examples of the highest art of the ten Lin shamans when they had to defend together. Wu Malin immediately kneels down and makes a special gesture of gratitude, bows and exclaims, she is grateful to the Lord for sharing the secret thousand-year technique. But Fei, leaving, only tells her to get up. She has already figured out the basics, so if she continues in the same spirit, she will very soon make a breakthrough to the intermediate stage. Mullen gets up and performed one of the techniques in the air. Smoke began to emanate from her hand, and the silhouette of a black dragon appeared. She looked at her palms and thought happily, she was really able to make a breakthrough to the middle stage. At this time, Nightmare was watching her through a telescope. Having seen what happened, he was surprised. She was one of the two who was able to defeat the whole gang then. It turned out to be not so simple. A man's joyful voice is heard in the Song Villa. It's still morning. Why didn't old Jai warn you that he was coming? He's not ready at all. But I explained to Jai Chongwei that their relationship is such that they can do without a ceremony. Song Qingyan shook his hand and clarified, did they want to talk? But he handed over the affairs to his son, maybe it's better for them to talk to him. Song Hao, who was sitting on the sofa nearby, noted that Chang Wei already knows that the current prices for microcircuits are very high. He tells them if they want this chip, they will have to add at least 2 billion. Hearing this, he shouts in shock, 2 billion, isn't this too much? Yao Guang, sitting next to him, frowns and understands that dad was not prepared to hear such numbers. She must help him. So after picking up a cup of tea, she explains that they can offer a billion. She also asks Song how not to take what happened the day before to heart, but he tells her to calm down. It has nothing to do with her. After that, he turns to the two and clarifies that the cooperation of their families is very important. Is it just about money? In truth, he likes her. If she agrees to marry him, then he can throw in a billion as a gift. Jai Changwei gets even angrier and disagrees and declares, business is business. Whether to marry or not is their personal choice. You should not mix personal life with business. At the same moment, he thinks that his family has never stooped so low as to exchange his daughter for a discount. Vin Hao spreads his arms to the sides, answering, but business is business. They can go, he has nothing more to offer them. But when they are almost leaving the room, he calls out to Jai Yao Guang and asks her to stop. As soon as she turns in his direction, Song Hao throws her a small key and says that she can come when she changes her mind. Only she should come in the evening. They soon return home. As soon as Lin Fei sees Yao Guang passing by, he wants to get up from his chair and joyfully says, they didn't come back. But when she silently walks past him, he wonders why her eyes are red. Was she really crying? Then standing up, he insistently asks what happened. Jai Yao Guang turns around and shows her upset eyes, explaining that nothing happened. She's just tired and wants to rest a little. When Jai Chongwei approaches him, he explains that in fact, the unscrupulous son of the Song family set a condition for her. He wants to marry her. And after some time, they even sat opposite their friend at the coffee table, and he told Fei about everything that had happened. Having listened to this, he clenches his fists so hard that the cup in his hand simply bursts into small fragments. The sky above his head darkens, the wind rises and red energy streams surround him. Lin Fei exclaims emphatically that this guy is a freak. 
You will destroy him in an instant. But suddenly he stops and notes, no, that won't do. He thinks that if he does this now, the Bai family will turn against Yao Guang even more. He cannot reveal who he is now. Therefore, he then turns to Jai Chongwei and clarifies, is the Song family the only one in the country who produces such microcircuits? He replies that he doesn't really. The richest family in the southwest, surnamed Yao, also produces chips of a much higher level. However, their technology is unique, they definitely will not reduce the price. Fei, hearing this with a warm smile, noted that it turned out that this family was able to settle down well in this unstable world. Chunwei, frowning with interest, clarifies, what is this about? Lin Fei, as he glues the broken bowl back together and fills it with tea, explains that the Yao family has been worshipping him for over 4,000 years. So Jai Chongwei can relax, he will handle this matter. It's evening at a factory in Germany. Someone's loud voice is heard, was God Lin looking for him? Fei explains into the phone that he needs help. Yao Zhicheng readily exclaims that his family is willing to take risks for him, but he hastens to calm him down. All he needs is for Zhicheng to provide the Jai family with some chips. Hearing this, he thoughtfully replies, that's it. Lin Fei, noticing the changes in his voice, clarifies, does he not want to do this? But he answers excitedly no, he just didn't think that the greatest would look for him for such a trifle. It is currently in production in Germany, and will be finished only in half a month. Post he will return to China with the chip, and immediately contact this family to conclude an agreement. When the conversation ends, Jai Chongwei bows and thanks Fei for helping his family get out of a difficult situation. He doesn't even know how to thank him, but Lin Fei explains that this is usually nothing. Then Chongwei thinks Yao Zhicheng so easily agreed to sell their precious microcircuit and didn't even mention the price. If this guy is really interested in his daughter, then their family is incredibly lucky. This is good. He needs to arrange for him and Yao Guang to have dinner together as soon as possible. Suddenly, someone's loud scream is heard. Jai Yao Guang must open the door. Meng Ji knocks on the glass front door with all her might and repeats, she must open the door. He was sent by Hao to give her something. This is an invitation to President King's birthday party. Song Hao goes there and gives her the opportunity to go there with him. With him. However, he insists that it was Fei who gave it to her. The Jai family has come to an end, and he is a simple security guard, so why is he showing off? Suddenly Lin Fei approaches him, hits him in the stomach and asks, didn't he say that he couldn't bend over? Ji, sitting on the ground and clutching the place of the blow, screams, he hit him. He'll get it for it. But then Fei steps on his back and asks again, will he pick up the envelope he threw or not? He shouts with all his might that he will do it, only Lin Fei must stop. Soon handing the envelope directly into Wu Malin's hands, he wonders what's wrong with this guard. He is sick. What is this family even doing? But he will still get to this guy. Evening comes, Nightmare sits on the roof of a neighboring house and watches the Jai family's house with binoculars. Mullen recalls and notes that that boy is not so dangerous. That girl is exceptional. He doesn't know how strong she really is. So he should send it to someone to find out. Thinking about this, he takes the phone and dials the number. At this time, a lot of things are scattered on a small sofa. Someone's laughter is heard. Black Rose, hugging with Bai Zhan, answers the call and says with displeasure, who is calling in the middle of the night. Then, picking up the phone, she blushes from the fact that Jan hugs her tighter and stutteringly asks what is he saying. Does she need to send Bai Zhan? She sent Nightmare to handle the case. She was not ready to work for him. But he insists and smiles slyly. He asks to send Jan to find out how strong Malin is. If they disagree, then her husband will find out that she is dating Jan. So what? Bai Zhan takes the phone and replies that he understands everything and will do everything. He then tosses her phone aside and hugs her tightly again as she laughs cheerfully. The next morning, when Lin Fei was again sitting at a small table on the street, a voice rang out. King Fen came to visit the Great One. Fei moves the Go Game pieces on the table and says to Fen who came up, Did the medicine work so quickly? Fen hands him a sealed envelope and explains that finding those medical ingredients was not so easy. This time he came to invite the Great One to a holiday dedicated to the birthday of his daughter. He knows that the Great One may not be interested in this, but this is how his king family earns their respect. Lin Fei briefly and disinterestedly replies that he will come. At the same moment he notes that if Yao Guang is invited by Song Hao, then he should also be there. 
King Fen, placing the envelope on the table, bows and exclaims, he thanks the great. Fei Zhen moves the black chip to another cell of the playing field and offers to sit down. Maybe they can play one game? But he frowns and bashfully replies that the great ones overestimate him. He is so stupid that he won't even master ordinary checkers, even if he studies by the sweat of his brow for the rest of his life. At this time, he also thinks that this game is even more difficult. This is not for a mere mortal. But Lin Fei throws away one of the chips and explains that it's not his stupidity. His life is simply too short. Now he can go. Fen makes a gesture of gratitude and, bowing his head slightly, replies that he understood everything. But at the same time, he understands that the human age is too short. In 3,000 years, any fool could become a master in this game. It turns out that the Great is a master not only in chess, but also in science, art, and everything else. Soon, a large green SUV drives up to the Jing family's house, from which Bai Zhan gets out and, holding a cigarette in his mouth, shouts, Wu Malin, she should try to fight him. Fei, seeing him, activates his abilities in his left hand and clarifies, Is he Zhan from the Bai family? Isn't that how Jing Yao Guang fainted? What does he know about it? But he takes out a cigar and answers irritably, What kind of nonsense is the guy talking about? He heard that she was poisoned, but what does that have to do with him? Lin Fei is about to attack him, but first he clarifies, Did he come to challenge Malin to a fight? Bai Zhan, holding up the envelope, agrees, right. The guy can give it to her. With these words, he throws the invitation forward so hard that it flies like an arrow and crashes into a column near the entrance to the house. Fei just brings the mug of tea to her mouth and agrees, okay, okay. Jan says with an evil smile, he likes that the guy didn't even blink an eye. Who is he? He closed his eyes and answered coldly, the guard. Then Bai Jan leaves and shows a rude gesture and finally says goodbye. He will still waste time on some security guard. When the car drives away, Lin Fei argues that it seems that she is getting old after all. Before, not even a dragon dared to show off in front of him. As evening approaches, the sky turns golden thanks to the setting sun's rays. A black limousine stops near the house. Wu Malin comes out with Yao Guang and joyfully explains that they have returned. He points his finger back at the envelope stuck in the column and explains that there is her gift there. Malin asks, confused her? Afterwards, taking the envelope, she wonders if the ruler gave her a gift. Is this really another ancient technique? But after reading the contents, he exclaims in horror, A challenge to fight? How does Jan challenge her to a fight? She immediately wonders how she could have offended him. Jai Yao Guang imagines him as a cocky puppy and remembers, Bai Jan, the same psychopath Bai. Hu Malin grabs her hands and asks with tears in her eyes, Yao Guang should tell her how she could have hurt him, that he now wants to beat her. Lin Fei, having heard your conversation, clarifies, is he strong? Jai Yao Guang tells that John has been practicing martial arts since he was seven years old, and at the age of 12, he had already reached the initial level of cultivation. For 18 years, he was already at the average level, having defeated everyone at the Qingdu fighting competitions. At the age of 26, he was so strong that he single-handedly smashed all the famous martial artists to smithereens. He bothers a lot of people. Someone hired a killer to kill him, but he couldn't even leave a scratch on his body. She and Moline saw the CCTV footage. It was something. But Fei, not surprised by this information, notes, does that mean he's violent? He recognizes only strength. He does not feel any boundaries. Wu Malin, hearing this from him, thinks with displeasure, he is so magnificent here. For them, mere mortals, Bai Zhan is the real embodiment of superpower. Yao Guang shares the same opinion with her. Again, he started his high speeches. Afterwards, she turns to Moline and suggests that maybe she will refuse. She, turning to Lin Fei, wants to say something, but interrupting her, he sternly says, Jan is not her rival. She immediately agrees, waving her hands negatively, no, of course not. How can she defeat him? Then he turns his body towards them, red streams appear around him. He says that he is helping Wu Moling cultivate so that she can become a reliable protection for Jai Yao Guang No, so that she hides from danger in the corners. She is a coward to fight with some Bai Zhan, while daring to be called a descendant of one of the shamans of Mount Linchen. At this point, she notes that if Zhan scares her, then she has no right to look her great-great-grandfather in the eyes. Therefore, after she takes the envelope again and dials the number on the phone, she says, Bai Zhan, this is Moline. She accepts his challenge. In the group chat on ancient martial arts of the four provinces, group administrator Shaw writes an announcement that Malin has accepted John's challenge. He invites everyone to arrive earlier than the specified time for discussion. 
The battle will take place in two days at the top of King Cheng Mountain. The fifth leader writes in bewilderment, Who is this girl who dared to accept the challenge of Psycho Bai? The user under the nickname Basketball Brother is also dissatisfied and adds that she has no brains at all. In recent years, he has crippled so many professionals, is it still not clear that it is better not to mess with him? The timekeeper notes that Bai Zhan wouldn't call just anyone to wallpaper either. The supermaster mocks, how could it be otherwise? John is the native son of the great Bai Pajin, trained by Master Zong himself. Bai Zhan, reading everything that is written in the group chat, holding his glasses to his eyes, exclaims with satisfaction, he can't wait for the day when he fights Wu Mullen. The Nightmare, having also read all this, grins slyly and thinks out loud, he just needs John to distract her, and then he can easily complete the task. After that, he adds laughing, how can he kill Jai Yao Guang? At this time, Malin is standing near the sofas in a small room on which Yao Guang and Lin Fei are sitting. She is very worried and asks what the owner thinks about her chances of winning the battle with Bai Zhan. Fen answers without hesitation, 60 to 40. Jai Yao Guang asks in surprise, only 60% to win? Is there any way to increase them? But Wu Malin, approaching her with his hand on her shoulder, asks her not to worry, 60% is already good. Considering her chances, she should reconsider how to respond to Song Hao's proposal. Yao Guang replies that they will move step by step. Malin, everyone next to her sighs heavily. But Lin Fei, noticing their drooping mood, puts a small white cup on the table and announces that he can help Wu Malin win. This time they will not engage in cultivation, but in martial arts. There is only one way called the Lord's Strike, which is the Northern Heavenly Deity's attack. Having heard this, she fearfully clarifies, Won't that be too much? She can kill Zhan with one blow, right? Jai Yao Guang also adds doubtfully, Is it that cruel? But he explains that if she does not want to kill the enemy, then she must understand that her body will not withstand any of his attacks. He leaves, he will return before the King family party starts. Well, although he thinks, when he wanted to buy a car last time, he came across some freaks. But you still need to buy a car. The four shopping center looks very stylish and modern. The walls of the building, thanks to the fine lattice, let in a lot of light, and the black roof fits laconically into the interior. The manager politely greets Lin Fei and asks which model he is interested in. Or maybe he's looking for something cheaper. There is a blue folder in his hands, despite the fact that he is smiling. At this moment, he notes contemptuously, This guy is dressed so simply, it is immediately clear that he has no money. So he will recommend something very simple to him. Then he points his hand at a small white car and explains that it seems to him that this model suits the young man perfectly. The man thinks that this car costs only 50000 Such poor people have that kind of money. But when Fei doesn't answer him, he notes with irritation what kind of expression is that. It can't be, if he can't even buy such a car for 50000 why did he even come here? The manager, still maintaining politeness, clarifies if he doesn't like it. Does he want to watch something else? At the same time, he mentally exclaims, This guy is a rogue. He's just wasting his time. He better go home, wash himself, and get a good night's sleep. Then the man approaches a car that looks more like a small truck and exclaims, This car suits the young man even more. Lin Fei does not answer anything, but asks the question, He is a god. Can you really say from him that he is going to deliver bread? He will only hear ridicule when he opens the window of this car on the road. Does this man think that this suits him? After you ask him with irritation, does he not understand cars at all? Well, in response to this, the manager explains that this is the cheapest car here. There is simply nothing cheaper. If he is not going to buy a car, then it is better for him to get out of here as soon as possible and not waste his working time. Then Fei announces that he must show him the most expensive cars. The man can't stand it and points his finger at him and shouts, He's gone crazy. Is he pretending to be sick now? Can he even afford them? It's clear from him that he's not looking. He came here and wasted his time. Does he have no brains at all? Well, suddenly he falls silent when he sees how a red warning glow began to emanate from Lin Fei, and he clarified, is the man tired of living? But suddenly a girl approaches them and asks in confusion what's going on. The manager falls to the floor, and Fei explains that he wants to buy an expensive car, and this man only shows him cheap ones. But he immediately replies that if the guy really buys an expensive car, he will fall on his knees in front of him. The girl immediately approaches a small platform on which a modern-looking car stands and explains that they have a limited edition model in their showroom. 
The boss doesn't think it can be sold, so he put it up as a model. It costs $25 million. Without any hesitation, Lin Fei takes out the black card and announces that he is taking it. She is shocked and asks again, what? The manager also adds that he still hasn't woken up or what? Does he even know how much $25 million is? Fei, fanning herself with her credit card, clarifies, is $25 million a lot? The man still incredulously, and even with some contempt, exclaims, good, he is cool. Since he doesn't want to listen to it, he can buy it. He'll see how the guy pays for it. Lin Fei crosses his arms and asks out loud why he thinks this man is stupid. At this time, the girl swipes the cards through the payment machine, and it announces that the payment has been approved. The manager arrives in shock and freezes in place. And Fei calmly clarify how long will he have to wait until the car is delivered. She explains that in normal times, this would take half a day. It's late now, and the earliest it can be delivered is tomorrow at lunchtime. But since he is their honored client, if he doesn't mind, they can take him in this car. For this, he must give his address and contact number. But he leaves, the girl insists, maybe she will drive the car. But Lin Fei explains that this is not necessary. They just have to deliver it tomorrow to the address provided. She joyfully jumps up and shouts that she sold the car for $25 million. She will receive a commission of a whole million for this. The man, realizing his mistake, almost cries and says, What has he done? He lost a whole million. When Faye leaves the salon, she gets into a taxi and answers the phone. The man says that the Jai family is already at the King Festival. Does it need to be picked up? He opens the car door and replies that there is no need to do this. He will take a taxi. Soon he arrives at the King family's house. One of the guests, who is in the yard and sees him, mockingly asks what he is doing here. Did he come to work as a security guard? Is his salary not enough anymore? But Lin Fei replies quite seriously that he came for dinner. When he walks to the entrance, people start whispering, Who is it? He just walked in here and can eat and drink here in peace. He arrived by taxi. Does the King family invite people like this? When Fei walks inside, not paying attention to the ridicule directed at him, he looks around and wonders where Yao Guang is. Meng Ji, turning around and seeing him, notes with irritation, this dead guard dared to show up for the son's holiday. He can't even look at him. Song Hao, standing next to him, asks again, is the guard dead? But then he remembers it and, loudly frightened, thinks it can't be. Is the Prince of Darkness here too? Lin Fei to a small green artifact lying on a small pillow and holding a glass of wine in his hand thinks sadly, King Yunchen spent his whole life worshipping and praying for the people of Dai. Now he has fallen to these. Although almost 4,000 years have passed. Suddenly Yi points his finger at him and loudly announces that there is an outsider here. Then he mockingly adds, the guy entered the King family's house and doesn't even show it. He wanted to steal rare items and sell them. But Fei turns around and notes that it looks like he didn't understand anything yesterday. But Meng Ji, without listening to him, pushes Hao forward and continues to shout, Everyone should see this. Not only did the guy break into the house for the purpose of stealing, but he also wants to start a fight with the one who revealed it. But at that moment, King Fen comes down from the Snow White stairs and sternly asks who had the courage to break into his house during the holiday to steal something. Well, unexpectedly, looking ahead, he sees what is happening and stops. Ji ran up to him and repeated that he came here just in time. There is a thief there. It's good that he noticed him in time, otherwise he would have already stolen something. But Fen, on the contrary, gives Lin Fei a deep bow and explains that he is very ashamed. Meng Ji, seeing this, is horrified like those around him. The head of the largest holding in Chengdu bows his head in front of this ragamuffin. King Fen asks Fei what to do with that unscrupulous person who dared to slander him. He announces that everyone must listen to him carefully. Ji is already shaking with fear and understands that his father gave him the invitation to this evening. If Fen finds out that his father did not come in person, they will be finished. Therefore, he immediately bows from the waist and offers forgiveness. This is all, and it seemed to him that he was sincerely ashamed in front of Lin Fei but he only contemptuously announces that the stupid brawler should get out of here. Meng Ji doesn't argue at all and announces that he's leaving, he won't be here. But just as he is about to do so, King Fen stops him and shouts for him to stop. He invited his father here, they invited him. Since he still needs to appear here in person, he may not appear at all from now on. The guy can tell his father that he will wait for a statement from him, he is leaving. The security must escort the guest out now. 
When the man starts to pull Yi towards the exit, he tries to fix the situation and begs for another chance. But the next moment he finds himself outside the door and almost falls off the threshold. Then, taking his hands and the phone, Meng Ji realizes that if his father finds out about this, he will die. But still, how good it is that he is friends with Song Hao, he will definitely help him. Soon King Fen's daughter comes down the stairs in a beautiful brown dress with black accents. She paused for a few moments to say out loud that she was grateful to everyone for coming to her birthday party tonight. Following her in an airy turquoise dress is Jai Yaoguang. Suddenly, she turned her head and saw Lin Fei smiling and wondered why he was here too. Song Hao, watching him, also wonders where he even came from since even Fen bows to the front. At this moment, his phone beeps with an incoming audio message. Hao takes it out of his inner jacket pocket and holds it to his ear and listens. In this audio message, Meng Ji notes that Song Hao knows what just happened. So he asks if he can help him and put in a good word for him in front of the King family. But he just irritably interrupts the audio and says, This fool should leave him alone. Who is he to help him? At this time, the girl, pointing at Yao Guang, asked what kind of piece of paper was inside her pendant. She answered thoughtfully, It seems like an amulet. The green-haired girl was very surprised. It wasn't the charlatan Lin Fei who gave it to her. She asked in surprise, charlatan. He, approaching them, was also surprised, a charlatan. This is the first time someone calls him that. This is something new. But King Fen's daughter, dissatisfied, crossing her arms, clarifies that he doesn't want to admit to cheating. Jing Yao Guang hurried to protect him. Lai Zhu misunderstood everything. He is not a charlatan. But suddenly someone walks up to her, holding out a small red box and congratulating her on her birthday. A girl standing nearby saw this and screamed, This is a limited edition diamond bracelet from a famous brand. There are only 5,000 of these in the whole world but they don't envy her that much. If someone gave them such a bracelet, they would also fall in love with that person. But King Lai Zhu only modestly thanks Song Hao when accepting the gift. He then goes to Yao Guang and, extending his hand in her direction, clarifies whether he can invite her. But Fei appears in front of him, closing it and strictly saying, No way. Hao grinningly notes that they met again. In their competition, he showed that he is a real genius. Lai Zhu, hearing this, is very surprised and clarifies, Song Hao also knows this charlatan. Afterwards, she wonders, is this swindler so famous that representatives of the three richest families in the city know him? Hao, in response to her words, asks what she called him. But she confirms, as if nothing had happened, yes, he gave Yao Guang a piece of paper with an inscription as an amulet. To wear this, she even ruined a natural amber necklace. And he also tried to deceive her by pretending to be some kind of saint. Song Hao bows again to Lin Fei and makes a respectful gesture and says, So this means Holy Lin. But at the same time, he mentally notes that it turns out that this guy is a simple swindler. He thought that this was someone much cooler. Afterwards, he announces that since the saint is here, what will he give Lai Zhu for his birthday? The elixir of eternal youth or Duegar? Come on, I must surprise them with his gifts. The girls around start whispering again, cheater. What kind of people are there? That's for sure. How is already thinking enough? Since he is a charlatan, he should not be surprised that he will put him in his place in front of all the high society of Chengdu. But Fei irritably asks him in response, Who does he think you are? A mere mortal who simply dared to encroach on God. King Lai Zhu, unable to bear it, shouts at him, He should come to his senses already. What is it about him that he talks to steelheads this way? Yao Guang intervenes in the conversation and explains that she should not dare to speak like that. Didn't she hear that Song Hao was the one who provoked him first? Hao, approaching her, explains that he wants to open his eyes. He doesn't want her and his father to fall for this deception, isn't he right? Hao, after a strong blow to the cheek, grabbed the bruise and shouted with anger, Lin Fei, who even let him hit him. Fei asked again, does he think he needs permission for this? Zhu screamed at him, pointing her finger at him. What does that even mean? Why does he beat her guests at her own party? Security needs to get him out of here as soon as possible. The guard came closer to her and shouted back, Yes, mistress. Suddenly, someone behind them shouted at them to stop. It was Zhu's father who came closer to them, and she asked him to see how he treated his friend Hao. After these words, he hit her on the cheek, which also produced an incredibly strong bang. In a state of shock, she grabbed her cheek and asked him in a trembling voice, Why did he do this? He looked at her angrily. She began to cry loudly and shout that it was her birthday today, 
and he beat her right in front of the guests. After this situation, she ran out of the room while the guard shouted at her, Madam, how, also looking after her departing father, Zhu did not understand what was happening. He turned around and shouted at the others, Are they still here? The guards ran to the exit and shouted to him that they understood everything. How turned to King and told him that he should not leave everything as it was. He demands an explanation. King frowned and answered him, asking him what explanations he needed. At the said reception, he insulted his respected guest and spread dirty rumors that Miss Jai was marrying him. He put her name on it. And as for the shining Mr. Lin, any normal man in his place would never allow someone to insult his beloved woman. Guan looked away embarrassedly and repeated these words in her thoughts, and Fei also lowered her gaze and thought, for several thousand years he had not seen such a sweet expression on her face. King abruptly began to shout, Song Hao, if he does not agree with him, let King Yun come, and then there will be another conversation. Chaosti again teethed in anger and asked him again, Does he want to start a war with the Song family? He shouted back that he had said enough. If someone goes against his serene lord, then it means someone is against him, King Fen. The people around were stunned by the conversation that was happening and wondered, Is he willing to go against the Song family because of some bodyguard of the Jai family? Has he gone completely crazy? He's really out of his mind. A blonde guy looked after the Fei and wondered how strong this Lin Fei is. Zhang Tianling is okay, but King Fen is moving in the same direction. Fen began to scream loudly. They probably think that he has gone crazy, but his serene Mr. Lin is his benefactor. Fei thought about it. Now Fen is very similar to his distant ancestor named King Yujin. He once shouted that a person should not forget goodness, otherwise he will be no different from a wild beast. It's a pity. The full moon is still in the sky, and your old friend can no longer be found. Hal got angry at him and shouted, Okay, let him wait. He will very much regret what he did. When he went outside and lit a cigarette, he thought that he had also exposed him as an animal, but he wouldn't leave it like that, and would definitely take revenge on him. At the same moment, he dialed the phone and said that he needed the help of a friend because he needed to teach one idiot a lesson. There was no need to kill him. He just wanted him to lie at his feet and beg for mercy. After some time in the office, Fei was looking at the shelves with books. Fen came up to him, bowed and said, Sir, he was not so strict with his daughter and she will be punished. He replied that there was no need for this, to which Fen continued to say that he had heard a lot about what happened between the Song and Jai families. If he has any instructions, he should boldly speak about it, Mr. Kuzlin. The King family will offer all their insignificant strength, but will carry out his instructions. At the same moment, he reflected that it seemed that His Serene Highness was very upset by his daughter's outburst. Fei looked at him and asked him not to worry about it. He already has a plan. It's better to let him talk about what he really wants to tell him. Fen said in response, Well, in that case, he will not hesitate. From generation to generation, the Bai family protected the property of the King clan. They had a family secret of improving strength. But now in the King family, there is no one left who could practice the art of war. And in the Bai family, masters appear one by one. And now they are dominated by an ancient female spider. In the past, she hatched evil plans against them. And they were kind to them and did not overthrow their power. But now everything has changed. His son named King Miyu has already been hit by them. Fei handed him an orange envelope and said, His feelings were clear to him. He appreciated his nobility, and he has strong pain, honesty, and knows how to be grateful for this. He gives his family a magical amulet that will help the family preserve prosperity and peace. Fen accepted the gift, bowed to him, and shouted that he was very grateful to him, his serene Lord Lin. Fei told him that, however, he was not sure that his daughter would accept anything from him. If she were in danger, it would be difficult for her to avoid trouble. Fen apologized for bothering him, but will definitely try to do something with her. Fei looked at the floor and thought about Guan, who was calming the crying zoo in a separate room. When she left the room and slammed the doors, Fei asked her a question, did she give Zhu a chain? Does she think that something could happen to her too, just like with Minju? She answered yes. She thought since he had a difficult relationship with the king director, he would probably want to help their family, but Lixu was unlikely to be happy with his kindness, and so she decided to do it this way. He won't be angry with her for using his gift this way. Fei answered her with a smile on his face. It's just an amulet that's not difficult to get. He was very delighted with her care. After a while, they didn't go outside, and he said that it was already late and they needed to go back. 
Hao approached them, smoking a cigarette and puffing it directly at them, saying to Ye Guang that he was giving her one last chance. Either she leaves with him today, or he will not bear responsibility for the consequences. Fei calmly took a step closer to him and said Guan did not pay attention to him. At that moment, a guy named Tao Yu approached them and said that he dared to ask Sir who he was. And what kind of school and group will he be, having turned around from solitude and come into conflict with his student? He replied that he did not belong to any school or group. Ye Guang mentally wondered after returning from seclusion. Does this man really belong to a mysterious group that studies ancient martial arts? Inc. Concluded, he wants to say that he is self-taught. Does he really take him for a fool? His name is Tao Inc. He is a student of the great Tao Kayan, a master who has achieved complete wisdom. Since he is familiar with the ancient art of war, he must have heard the name of his teacher. Fei asked him again, is he talking about Tao Kayan? And you asked him again, was he scared? Fei replied, not at all, he had not heard of such a thing. The Anu became angry and trembled with hatred for the fairies, asking the question, is he tired of living? How dare he even insult the bright name of his teacher? He waved his hand when suddenly one of the girls, who was nearby, raised her phone and shouted to the others that it was all starting. There is no need to block her lens, since she is actually filming with a camera. The guy standing next to her shouted that he needed to be faster, it was going to be hot. He will upload the video, anyone should shoot. Hao approached the mentor, patted him on the shoulder and said, There are a lot of people here, and someone might call the police so they should be careful. He began to lead him around the corner, but looking at Fairy Grosno pointed her finger at him and shouted that they would consider him lucky. Fei silently looked at Ye Guang, who tugged at his sleeve. Hao turned to her again and said, So be it, today he will not touch her guard, but she must go with him. Fei took another step towards him and said, She's just some kind of retard. Their microcircuits and their Song family got rich. Does he think this is enough to control the Jai family? Hao pointed at himself and said that this was a blatant lie. Who dared call their chip retarded? Apart from the Yao family, which is the richest in the entire Southwest, no one can look highly at the chip of the Song family. Those around them laughed and someone said, This guy is joking or something. He continued waving his arms and saying, Even if their family Jai one day, don't they think all these shareholders, managers, and ordinary workers will want to obediently go to the next world with them? Ye Guang screamed in anger that this was happening this way because they were all loyal to their family and he shouldn't care about it at all. After these words, the manager of Jai Corporation, named Liu Cheng, approached him and said, Madam President Jai, cooperation with the Song family is very beneficial for them and completely safe. For their common benefit, he thinks that they should talk more closely with the young master, that she can anyone say to this? She was very surprised by his words and asked him again. Their family was kind to him. How could he do this? Hao began to shout to her that she must remember that Mur is the person who understands the laws of development of society. If she continues to procrastinate, then before she knows it, she will be left without family and people's support. Between them is not only their product department, but he is afraid that even their CEO, who is currently trying to pass by with caution. He waved his hand at the Enzi and shouted his name loudly. At the same moment, he thought that if the Enki joined him, he thought that the Ye Guang would no longer have any doubts. He was dumbfounded and thought that this demon was also here, after which he turned with a smile on his face and said to Mr. Framisong, he then remembered that he had business and had to run away from here. Hao Na became alert and said his name in a trembling voice, but at the same moment Enki turned to run in the opposite direction and reflected on the fact that he was no longer in this place. Song Hao, he already helped him once. One call Zhong Qianling and King Fen hit his daughter to prove his devotion, so enough is enough. Sun Hao, he's a complete idiot for playing with death. Cheng turned to Song and said that it seemed like the CEO really had some urgent matters, otherwise he wouldn't be in such a hurry, so he shouldn't worry about it. Fei said, if the Jai family produces better quality chips, the Song family will suffer significant losses and the chip market will suffer a serious blow. He walked past Hao and said without emotion that he was afraid the Song family would have to make room, they would have to be content with only second place. He doesn't believe it's possible. Hal grinned and asked again, what kind of nonsense is he talking about? Is he just a charlatan, or does he really want to get into the game? He will tell him honestly, there are enterprises in Huexia that produce such microchips, but not the Jai family, nor the richest person there will ever achieve such a result. Fei asked him mockingly, is this true? 
Chang chuckled at his words and called him a hillbilly, wondering if he really expected to take possession of the chip of the Yao, the richest family in the southwest. Even if the Jai try very hard, they still won't see it. Ye Guang shouted to Chang that he would be removed from office tomorrow. Did he understand this? He was dumbfounded and thought that, according to her, he and the Jai Corporation, but before he had time to think this thought through, Hao hugged him and said that he would not only reinstate him in his position, but also increase his salary. Ching thanked him for this favor, and Hao told him to come back and check everything. Riots should begin in the Jai Corporation from tomorrow morning. Ye Guang shouted, everyone else must be like this non-entity Liu Cheng. Hao waved his hand and said, then they will already leave and we'll see later. On the second day, someone shouted to Ye Guang that things were very bad. It was Malin who ran up to her and shouted that Liu Cheng and the management members were causing a scandal. Ye Guang, who was brushing her teeth, turned to her, immediately took off her robe and said that they needed to quickly go to the office. Jai Corporation Tower Someone shouted, CEO Jai, the corporation is in critical condition. Only if they compromise with the Song family can they stay afloat. If he refuses to cooperate with them, the company is finished. Mr. Lin, perhaps he should sit down here. Chun Wei slammed his palm on the table and shouted that they need to agree to this marriage and then they will receive the necessary company and support because this is a very profitable deal. When he saw Ye Guang standing nearby with Fei, he looked at them in bewilderment and Fei said, It looks like everyone is already here. One of the employees pulled on his tie and said, This is a meeting of senior level board members. What is an ordinary security guard doing here? Chun Wei made room for him and said to please sit down. The employee was very surprised by these actions and shouted, Director Jai, what does this mean? Did he put a security guard in the chair of the board of directors? Is he even sane? Director Han, what will he say to this? He realized that everyone knew that he had moved to the side of the Song family and MK, with embarrassment, decided to speak out that Director Jai had his own reasons why he made this decision and they should return to this conversation later. Those around him looked at him in surprise and wondered if this was all he could say. Has he gone crazy too? Fei asked again, does he want him to figure it out? Chun Wei replied that if it doesn't bother him, that would be great. Fei began to say, okay, he himself doesn't like problems, so he will sort this matter out as quickly as possible. Now the company has divided into two groups. One is in favor of fixing the Song family and giving their share in marriage to this freak, Song Hao. The main thing is that they can make money from it, and they don't care about the rest. Others count on the patronage of the Jai family and want to continue cooperation with them. So, those who do not want the Jai family to bow their heads to the song can leave the meeting room because there are many such people. Many employees got up from the table and began to leave the office. Enki continued to sit silently at the table. Chen Wei hugged the other and told him that he was young and the Jai family would not let them down. They should not worry about it. Enki was sitting in a frightened state next to Fei who was watching him vigilantly, when suddenly he suddenly shouted, The Han and Jai families are ready to share glory and shame together. He is also worried about the future of the corporation, but under no circumstances will he insist that the Jai family bow their head. Those around him opened their mouths in shock and asked the question, Has he gone completely crazy? Is this really the same insidious conspirator who is ready to kill for his own benefit called Hanan? Inky rose from his chair and continued to shout, Dear shareholders and close friends of his father, he earnestly asks them to leave the meeting with him. Gentlemen, they must trust the Han and Jai families as well as Lord Lin. Many employees began to get up and one of them said, Okay, so be it. He is betting everything on the Han family. One of the employees with an untied tie also said, Gentlemen, they just need to see how many stupid people there are here. When the sun take over the corporation, these idiots will bite their own elbows. They continued to say, everyone else can also get out of here. They should go to the financial department and get their money. Chang Wei was wary of his words and wondered with fear what was going on. Ye Guang also wondered, does he want to get rid of two-thirds of the board members? How will the company continue to exist in this case? The gray-haired bald man shouted, but they are not going to fire two-thirds of the entire management. Then how will the corporation function? And they are clearly talking some kind of nonsense but in the end they just want to get rid of them. Perhaps even without the intervention of the Song family, the Jai Corporation will collapse like a house of cards. The employee with yellow glasses straightened them on his face and said, if such a large number of members of senior management are not fired, will it be possible to ensure the functioning of the company? 
He is the chief financial officer of the corporation and said, The most important question is, is Jai Corporation capable of paying such a sum of money? Does he even know any other losses that the company will incur by firing so many people? He continued to shout, The payments will be at least 200 million, although now this is not such a big figure for the company, but in the future an expensive purchase of a large batch of new tight microcircuits is expected. This solution is simply suicide. There are 3 billion on this card, and he thinks there will be no problems with payments. We need to get out of here as soon as possible. Fay said he is not afraid of death, he is doing serious things to take care of his health. After the former employees left the office, Chong Wei began to laugh loudly, and Yai Guang asked him, is he going crazy? How can he laugh at such a time? He came closer and said that he had made her quite worried lately. The Yao family has already agreed to give them the chips. She became embarrassed and with a feeling of pleasure asked him again, what did he say? Is that really true? He replied that it was all thanks to their friend named Lin Fei. To cover losses due to his dismissal, he lent them 200 million, and they will definitely have to return it to him. Ye Guang looked at him and thought, it turns out he did so many things secretly from her. Fei looked at her and said that she shouldn't do this, because who really should return 200 million is the Yao family. During the negotiations, the price just went up, and he will return this money to Zhicheng. Chang Wei replied, okay, after all, they were left without two-thirds of the management team, and he thinks their corporation will face great difficulties in the future. Ye Guang asked again, doesn't the dismissal process take about a month? By then, everyone will know about the joint cooperation with the Yao family, and she thinks that no one will want to leave them. Fei stood up and said that he would say about this Jiche, news about the joint cooperation will soon be published. At the same moment, he thought that his car was about to arrive, so he would go and look at it. Chan Wei looked at the back of his head and thought how wonderful it would be if he became his son-in-law. Fei went out into the street and stopped near an expensive parked car from which the driver got out and asked again, Is this Mr. Lin himself? He's in a hurry somewhere. Maybe he needs a ride. Let him look at this, because his car is very cool, and he can only dream of one. The Jai family is now in a terrible situation, and they will probably even have to sell the CEO's car. His own car drove up to Fei, and a car store employee came out, bowed and apologized to Mr. Br Lin for the traffic jam on the road, and let him accept their apology. The guy didn't understand what was happening. The drivers of this car asked Lin Fei for forgiveness. The girl handed him the keys and said that he must keep the certificate for the car. The operating manual and other documents are in the car, and he can check all this right away. The guy was very surprised by this news and asked himself what was going on. Fei showed him the keys and asked him again, Did he seem to be saying something now? Let him forgive him. He didn't hear. Can he repeat it? After some time in a cozy room, reading the newspaper, King Yun said to his son, these old cunning ones from the Jai family are finally in his hands. In a few days, the corporation will belong to them, and only the chips of the Yao family can surpass them. What a pity that they do not cooperate with anyone. At that moment, a man with gray hair and a mustache burst into their office and shouted that both were there. Do they even know what just happened? Do they still have enough shame to sit and drink wine here? New news about the Yao family has come out and it is said that they sold the Huishun chips at the standard price to Jai Corporation. Hao did not understand at all how this was possible and grabbed the newspaper to read it with trembling hands. King Yun grabbed him by the hand and, turning to his father, asked what they need to do now. He asked what to do. This is what he wanted to ask him. Hao got angry and started screaming, tearing his shirt. The freaks had thought out the way out in advance, and they openly want to destroy them. The old man threw down his cane, sat down on the sofa, and said that it was too late to talk about this. He thinks that next time there will be big trouble in the Song family. He didn't understand why the Yao decided to cooperate with the Jai. What a horror. For so many years he had not seen them get even a little closer. Was Lin Fei really involved in this again? After these thoughts, he called Liu Cheng on the phone, who sentenced him, Mr. Song, to celebrate his victory over the Jai family, they organized a big celebration and are waiting only for him. He gathered all the former board members who were fired by Jai, and now they will serve him. This is how they will get to know each other. Hao started shouting loudly, what other acquaintances? He doesn't care at all about their dismissals, and they should deal with it themselves. He used obscene language through the phone, and one of the employees wondered what this could mean. Why does Hao stretch so much? This shouldn't happen. Mr. Song, will Pushkin let you know what made him so angry? Maybe he's gone completely crazy. For some reason, he hung up on the phone. 
People around started shouting for everyone to quickly watch the Jai Corporation Weibo update. Wow. Jai Corporation is a Western Yao Corporation. You need to sign a cooperation agreement. Yao supplies microcircuits for the CZN. He was dumbfounded and thought, it's not surprising that NZ behaved in such a strange way. What a nasty freak. He knew everything in advance. How could he not tell him about it? After some time in Han Enzi's house, he began to wonder if he had done wrong, right? His father would probably turn his back on him for supporting the Jai family. But on the other hand, if he had not supported them, he would have faced the wrath of Lin Fei, and then their family would definitely have ended. He continued to circle around the house and think, when suddenly someone knocked on his door, and he was frightened and thought, so quickly, he must have come to get him out of here. The father entered the room and Enzi stepped back in fear and began shouting to him that he could beat him, he could scold him, he admits it all, but Fei is connected with Zhang Chanling. He decided that it would be easier to survive the collapse of their family than to face Lin Fei. His father hugged him tightly and laughed with a smile on his face and repeated that this was his son. Enzi, I don't understand what's going on and wondered if my father lost his sanity because of him. The father continued to laugh loudly and shouted to him. Yao and Jai signed a cooperation agreement for the supply of Huashun microcircuits for a long period. Now the Jai family is on top, and the song is in trouble, and they just had the opportunity to bypass the song. Inji was dumbfounded and said in a trembling voice that he had not expected such a turn. Father must stay away from bodyguard Jai Yeguang. Turned to him and replied that he knows that he has a great relationship with Zhang Chanling. The Jai and King families respect him very much, right? Inji said that not only that, he even suspected that this particular person was behind the cooperation between Jai and Yao. Meanwhile, Ye Guang approached Fei and told him that it was time to leave. He turned off the TV, got dressed and said, But there is no need to kill anyone, since he likes Bai Jianting. Molin muttered something in response to him in bewilderment. Mount Qingchen. Ye Guang was near the Fei looking out the window and said, Something happened. He has been standing here from the very beginning. He replied that he remembered his enemy named Zhang Daoling, who shouted that the heavens would not ascend until he destroyed the faith of Bashu Waiao. As long as the high Qingcheng mountains stand, they will not see Zhang Daoling. Molin looked up and said, They are already at the top, and that means they will soon be there. A woman approached her and shouted where she was going. Did she come to participate or watch? Participate in the Battle 70, watch 35, you can't enter without a ticket. Mullen took the tickets in her hands and thought that this was the first time she had encountered something like this. In order to participate in the battle, she still had to pay. It's so busy with so many people, no wonder they don't let you in without a ticket. In the center of the square was a huge young icon with a bunch of people crowded around it. They shouted to each other that they needed to try and let them pass. Jan came out from among the crowd, smoked a cigar and asked her, did she come here? Mullen answered him with confidence, yes. The presenter, who was sitting on the roof and filming the fight through a selfie stick, shouted, Friends, the broadcast of the Battle of Washu Masters will soon begin. If they are waiting for the beginning, they should like it. Jang, moments later, created a serious blow to the ground, from which many stones scattered everywhere and said, The first blow. She may think that this is how he greets her. He began to swing his fists everywhere and many fragments flew to the side, standing in bewilderment. She stepped aside and found herself behind one of the stone slabs, which protected her from the falling fragments, when suddenly she noticed that it began to collapse into small pieces, and it turned out that Jang hit this slab with his fist, and it scattered into several small fragments again. Molin managed to grab his hand, and he said that this was pretty good, after which he tried to dodge the blows of his legs, which he swung everywhere and said that he suggested doing it again. The surrounding people who were observing the situation and began to communicate with each other, and one of the men with glasses said, of course, he never doubted the incredible power of the Mad Bai, but what kind of thing is this in the end? This one from Molin, it is able to repel his blow. An unknown woman standing next to the man said that it was not surprising that she dared to accept the challenge of the Mad Bai. It turns out she was hiding her talents. Another woman standing next to them turned to them and asked, They are talking about this girl, but do they know who her teacher is? Jang at that moment raised his leg high and shouted, How can she get such a blow? Molin looked at this with caution and covered herself with her hands. And a moment later, there was a strong explosion and many fragments of stones scattered everywhere right on the surrounding people. Some of them were pumped with fear that everyone needed to quickly hide. 
a man in a long robe waved his wand and destroyed all the fragments so that they would not fall on people protecting them. Ye Guang wondered with concern, is Malin definitely going to be okay? Fei told her not to worry. Bai Zhan's blow did not have the desired effect. He missed the opportunity to succeed. Malin went to attack him and Jang rolled back and became wary. Now it was Malin's turn to counterattack. She approached him faster and swung her legs, pushing him further away from her each time. Those around them began to scream, Wow, are their eyes deceiving them? Crazy Bai was broken. One of the men also shouted, Quick reaction. The elder approached him and shouted, Did he teach him this technique? He frowned and didn't answer him. Jang thought about it. His father allowed him to use this technique. First, he must get rid of the pressure. Trauma for trauma. After these thoughts, he need Moline in the stomach, at the same moment when she punched him in the stomach with the same force, and they both jumped away from each other at a far distance and blood flowed from their mouths. Chang got to his feet, wiped the blood from his face and shouted, Everything is fine. He had not met such an opponent for a long time. She is a very strong girl, and therefore he must give his best. She looked at him with fear and wondered, that is, these were not yet very strong techniques, so you have to use only that technique. Jang, a moment later, began to transform into a terrifying monster with huge biceps and roared loudly. Commentators who watched the broadcast and began to write comments, Is this really an unrealistic transformation? Is this crazy ferocity? Even the clothes were scattered to pieces. How to make such special effects? This is a live broadcast, isn't it? What other special effects could there be? The subordinate Bai ran up to him and asked whether such a number of techniques would not lead to an overexpenditure of vitality. He replied, the body will simply be very overloaded and nothing more. If he reached this height, he would not be able to use this technique. Jan made a sudden movement and began to run towards Molin with incredible speed, shouting, furious storm. She was stunned. He jumped above her and swung the many fists that he created around himself, shouting the spell of a hundred fists. She was dumbfounded and backed away. Ye Guang standing behind her pulled out her hand, extended it towards her and shouted her name. Fei pushed her back a little and asked her not to worry and to look carefully at what was happening. She made a special movement with her hands, closed her eyes, and a bright light lit up in her forehead and the appearance of a majestic man in armor with a bright ring around his head and flames around his body appeared above her, she thought. The High Lord of the North will lend a helping hand to his disciple. After these words, she sharply opened her eyes and extended her fist, with which she began to defend herself from the blows of the Jan, and moments later their forces collided and the Elder was stunned by what he saw, saying in a trembling voice, This is a blow from the Supreme Lord of the North. After this blow, the Jan flew to the side and blood splashed out of his body, also from his mouth. His face darkened and he landed on the ground with an incredible crash. The surrounding people were frightened by what was happening and began to shout, Lord, this is the furious storm of Master Bai Pajun's hundred fists. The ancient art of Quan Shu, which destroyed the Lotus City, was defeated. What kind of trick did Moline use? Why was he so murderous? Mr. Bai ran up to him, hugged him and asked with fear how he was feeling. Togo continued to vomit blood and the Bai became very wary, after which he stretched out his hand and put it on his back shouting for him to stand calmly and not say anything. A yellow flame emanated from his hands, and he could not understand what kind of technique Moline was using. After that he started screaming, Girl, could she tell me the name of the move she just used? She shouted to him that this was a devastating attack from the Lord of the North. She held onto her hand, from which flames and many bloody vessels emanated. The Elder asked her again, the destructive attack of the Lord of the North. Could she teach him this technique? What can she say about this? To be fair, this technique originates from the High Lord of the North, the deity to whom he makes the offering. Bai shouted at him angrily, Yileadao, the offering to the Supreme Lord of the North is on Wudangshan Mountain, not King Cheng. He became embarrassed and laughed after such an amendment. Bai shouted the question, what is the name of her respected mentor? She looked at the fairies and quietly answered Ling, when she suddenly screamed sharply, Teacher Ling. She felt embarrassed because of her cry, and the fairy stood dumbfounded behind her. Bai replied, Are there master mentors in Sishk with the surname Lin? The elder told him that he had not heard about it. Meanwhile, the nightmare who was watching this battle in a white suit turned away and thought, Teacher Lin, hey Megui, do you want him to die? Malin didn't say a word about the real teacher who taught her. At that moment, a loud sound occurred, and he received a notification from Hai Megui, who asked if he had completed the task. 
He jumped up, grabbed the pink phone, and shouted, He did it. Does he think that he can easily change into another person? He wrote a message that Jai Yeguang not only has a bodyguard named Wu Malin, but she also has a super cool teacher and mentor. He answered, Three million. The nightmare pulled out its tongue and spoke out loud, but he understands this is a different conversation. It seems this task is not so hopeless. He immediately began to think that he just needed to find another strong mentor, and then he could get rid of the Yeaguan. Great Song Hao, he's in a quarrel with the Jai family, and his teacher Tao Kayan is the mentor in charge of training in martial arts. Megui asked again, did the wisest Tao Qian agree? Nightmare replied, if someone with fighting technique and spirits like Mullins finishes off the old man Song Hao, does he think that his mentor will remain on the sidelines? After some time in the house, Jai Fei turned to the girls and said, This secret organization of killers must, after all, have at least some brains. Because of them, the main bodyguard Ye Guang was injured, and none of them even tried to intervene. They really a bunch of complete idiots. Suddenly the phone rang in his pocket. He picked up the phone, and they said to him, Most serene Mr. Lin, this is Yao Zhicheng. He has already returned from abroad, and will be in the Lotus City tomorrow. Fei answered him that he offered to talk to Ye Guang on his own, after which he handed the phone to her, and she asked if they were calling her. He replied that Yao Zhicheng wanted to discuss their cooperation. She picked up the phone and asked with a smile, President Yao. Fei, meanwhile, went out onto the balcony and looked into the distance with a thoughtful look. Ye Guang came up behind him and said that they had already talked, and she asked him to keep his phone. Her face showed confusion, and she asked why he was so kind to her. He put the phone in his pocket and was dumbfounded, looking at her. He remembered her previous appearance once and replied that it was because she was a Yai Guang. At the same moment, he reflected that the feelings that had connected them for several millennia were simply impossible to forget. She answered, but they hardly even knew each other. Fei created a glow in his hands and said, in fact, in her past life, they spent 2,000 years together, and if she wants, he will show her what it looked like. She looked at his hand in fear and replied that she did not want this, after which she looked away sadly and said that she was Jai Ye Guang, who was an ordinary girl. Why can't she live the way she wants? Why does she have to become the Ye Guang Empress? Fei was upset and wondered if this meant he was rejected. She leaned over and said, he just needs to let go of the past and not pay attention to the similarities. In any case, there are no two identical colors in the world. He smiled and replied, at the very least, maybe she will fall in love with him again. She became very embarrassed and went back into the house and let it slip, that's it, she won't talk to him anymore. Second day, Twilight Hotel. Ye Guang walked with Fei and asked him if he would go with her to meet President Yao. He replied, yes, he just hadn't seen this guy for a long time. She remembered the president's appearance and his age, which made her wonder, is it a guy? When they entered the building, President Yao rejoiced and shouted, Celestial being, did he decide to come too? He replied, pointing to the Yeaguan, that this was President Jai of Jai Corporation. He thought that he understood everything, this is his wife, and he is very happy about it. He shook her hand and said that they had heard a lot, President Jai, and was very glad to meet you. She asked again, did he really sell a batch of microcircuits for them at that price? At this price, he probably couldn't even recoup the cost of the product. He smiled and replied that the damage was minor and she should not worry about it. Fei asked, where is Emperor Shun's bracelet? He replied, the celestial being must survive the bracelet he gave to his granddaughter Yao Zini. Sir, he returned to their family the Emperor's priceless bracelet, which protects them from extermination. How could he lose this? By the way, this year his granddaughter turns 26 years old. Zinni still remembers how he lifted her high into the clouds, how she admired the endless expanses of heaven. More than 20 years have passed, and she still can't forget it. As a child, she said that when she grew up, she would definitely marry him. By the way, nothing much has changed now. Lin Fei kindly asks Yao Zhicheng to tell Yao Zinni not to think bad thoughts, find a good guy, and marry him. He smiles in agreement, but at the same time thinks that if she had never seen Fei before, then maybe she could find a suitable match, but now is this possible? Suddenly, he extends his hand to Zhicheng, touching his forehead with two fingers and announces, Okay, don't stop chatting about the past. Ancient spell, the gate of knowledge of truth. The floor beneath their feet changes and now resembles purple clouds. In addition, white drawings appear along with brightly burning candles. Yao Zhicheng asks, confused, what? What is this? Lin Fei says, seven life extension candles. 
The once enlightened Zhu Liang used this technique to prolong his own life. Looked, Yao Zhicheng had no more than three years left to live, so he decided to give him another twelve years. The violet glow dissolves, and a candle with a bright flame remains in his hands. Zhicheng sits down on one knee and exclaims with tears in his eyes, he only did what was required of him. How did he deserve such generosity? Fei helps him up, holding the pledge and explains that he saved Jai Yao Guang's family from collapse, carried out his orders, he deserved it. Only he must remember that the candles must burn for seven days, otherwise nothing will come of it. The woman collects the candle and places it in the box, and Yao Zhicheng bows down in deeds of respectful gesture, sincerely thanks the saint. Lin Fei explains that there is one more matter, he must take it very seriously. As a child, Yao Guang was attacked. The villain knew about her origin. He wanted to take possession of her internal powers with the help of some sinister rituals. He tried to extract her yin and make up for the lack of yang. She was only nine years old then. Cheng resolutely says that he will do anything, will use all his strength, if only such an order is given to him. However, if this person knew about the rebirth of the Empress's soul, is it possible that this villain was one of his disciples' followers? Fei, indignant at the memories, says that this man used a witchcraft spell, and this is the only clue so far. Yao Zhicheng hear this repeating that the Yao family will do everything possible to sort out this tangled tree. At three o'clock in the morning, the Song family's country house was calm. The nightmare quietly jumps over the fence and heading towards the entrance thinks contentedly, today he smells like Wu Molino de Toilette, a technique he has perfected several thousand times. Now is the time to make an attack. Afterwards, passing by the panoramic windows and looking into the bedroom where old man Song was sleeping at that time, the nightmare angrily notes that the old man should perceive this as his wine. Then he quietly opens the glass door, and the old man immediately wakes up and shouts, Who's here? The nightmare does not hesitate for a second to strike him in the stomach, from which he begins to bleed from the mouth. Well, at that moment, Song Hao runs into the room with a loud scream, Grandpa, what's happened? But the nightmare already manages to run out of the guy, and he runs up to old man's son and orders two guards to grab him. They, armed with flashlights and bats, obediently answer, Okay. Song Qingyun also ran into the room in a panic and said that he needs to be taken to the hospital quickly. Or better yet, you need to quickly call mentor Tao Ying. But Hao, with tears running down his face, announces that they didn't have time. Grandfather had already died. He knows this cut and the remaining trail of perfume. This is Jai Yao Guang's chief bodyguard, Wu Malin. Then, looking up, he shouts that he will no longer be able to live further until he takes revenge for this. Their whole family will die. They must remember his word. He will finish everyone off. King Yen takes off his glasses and also starting to cry, asks him to calm down first. Anger is a bad help. They should first call the police, or better yet, go straight to the deputy chief of the station. Soon, when it was already blooming, a police car arrived at the Jai family's house. A man comes out of this and announces through the loudspeaker that the police are working now. They suspect that a criminal is here and asks for understanding and for everyone to leave the premises. Yao Guang yawns and goes to the window, but seeing three police cars near their gate, he wonders what's going on here. Song King Yun also gets out of the car and, approaching the policeman, explains that he suspects that the criminal may try to escape. They will not have time to catch him. Then Chief Wang gives a hand signal and shouts for the others to break down the doors. They can't wait any longer. They should ram the car door. It accelerates and crashes into a metal door, which immediately flies off. But at that moment, Lin Fei comes out of the house and Wang also sees him and understands it can't be. Someone came out. These iron doors will definitely crush him to death. He will be sent to prison for this. Suddenly, Wu Malin runs out of the house and stops it with one blow. Chief Wang, startled by the sharp sound, wonders if a person really did this. When she remains hostile and looks at the police officers who entered their yard, Fei notes matter-of-factly that there was no need for this. Song Hao, turning to Wang, shouts, did he see? The reception was exactly the same as how his grandfather was killed. Then he shouts to everyone to get their weapons ready. Therefore, upon order, the police point their pistols at them. Afterwards, Jai Yao Guang comes out of the house, who is excited and asks, Will anyone explain what is going on here in the end? Surely there was some kind of misunderstanding. But Chief Wang announces that her bodyguard Wu Malin is suspected of murder. According to the law, they must detain her and conduct an investigation. Hao also points his finger at her and shouts at her to stop pestering her. She ordered her to do it. 
but she is excited and covers her mouth with her hand. Even Lin Fei is surprised and asks, Is his grandfather dead? Song Hao immediately rushes at him screaming, he scoffs. But Song Qingyun stops him, turn it off so that he stops. He wants to get into a fight in front of the police. Afterwards, Wang approaches Yao Guang and explains that Song Lanshan was killed today in his own home. The criminal dealt with the victim with one blow. According to the relatives of the murdered man, the Jai family was at enmity with Song, which means they had a motive. Moreover, he saw with his own eyes that Malin really had such skills. But Jai Yao Guang immediately comes to her defense and explains that she was with her the whole time. She can confirm this. How could she commit murder? But Chief Wang replies that her testimony probably doesn't make sense. Afterwards, he turns to Wu Malin and is interested. But does he use eau de toilette from the famous French brand? She fearfully asks how they know this. Song Hao shouts furiously that the smell of this perfume remains in Grandpa's bedroom. Will she continue to deny it? But Fei points out that he's a fool. Doesn't he think someone might have stolen them? At this moment, he realizes that someone specifically wants to pit Jai and Song against each other so that they destroy each other. Presumably, people from the secret organization Dark Knight may be involved in this. Hao insists the evidence is irrefutable. He still continues to cover for her. Maybe they are at the same time with her. Then Lin Fei crosses the threes and turns to Jai Yao Guang to order her to release Wu Molin. They act according to the law. She is not guilty of anything, so he believes that the police will soon be convinced of this. Yao Guang, hearing this and looking at him, mentally notes, she doesn't know why, but when he speaks like this, she always feels calm in her soul, but feels safe. So she moves away and agrees, okay. One of the policemen immediately handcuffs Malin, and Lin Fei tells her to come with them. He's here, no one can put her away. She, maintaining a positive attitude and smiling, exclaims, Good. When the car is leaving, Jai Yao Guang looks at him and asks what he thinks. She is confident that the Song family will not stop there, will not insist on the strictest sentence, will not force the police to close this case as quickly as possible. He, picking up the phone and dialing the number, agrees, moreover, these two idiots will insist that it was she who gave the order to Wu Molin, and they can also blame him. First he will make one call, but he is afraid that he will have to sort this matter out personally. At this time, Baby Zhang's call is displayed on the screen of his phone. Seeing this, Yao Guang wonders who it is. Can he help? The next moment, Lin Fei puts the phone to her ear and says, Zhang Tianling. Hearing this, she exclaims in shock, Does he know Chief Zhang? At this time, while answering the call, lighting a cigarette, he clarifies, Is the celestial being calling about the case of Wu Molin? This case has caused a lot of resonance. Many people are watching the events, so the Celestial should tell him the truth. Is she really involved in this, or is it a false accusation? Fei explains that she was set up. The organization is a dark night. Tianling, hearing this, wonders, is it a dark night? Nightmare? He imagines how a nightmare floats over a blue block, in which a girl, a small metal spatula, and a knife can be seen. On the block, it is written that the girl, clutching her chest, is placed in a deep sleep under a layer of ice. At first glance, it seems that this is not real, as if it is just a perfectly executed work of art. The girl's gutted body was placed in an ice vice. Zhong Chanling puts out his cigarette on the bottom of the ashtray and replies that he will order a strict investigation. They have limited time. If the criminal is not found within two weeks, then he has some fear. Lin Fei interrupts him and says that he understands everything perfectly. Two weeks will be completely enough. All he needs to do is collect all the available information from the surveillance cameras near Song's house. But he is afraid that this information will be incomplete. Tianling, after listening to him, understands that this is simply a huge amount of data, considering that the criminal tried to hide his traces, isolating something useful from there is almost impossible. But still, he resolutely exclaims from the table, he understands, he will definitely do everything. Zhang Qianling understands that the celestial being cannot make mistakes, will follow his order. After finishing the conversation, he lights a cigarette and, releasing smoke through his mouth, mentally addresses the boss. This time a celestial being helps them, now he will definitely be able to take on the nightmare. He remembers running indoors and screaming loudly, Boss. The gray-haired man stopped in front of a block of ice with a girl inside and said tearfully, Granddaughter. After Tianling puts the cigarette on the windowsill and again, but now she addresses the man out loud. He is an old smoker. He probably also wants to take a puff. 
He will take revenge for his granddaughter. He will definitely take revenge. In the villa, Song Hao's cry is heard by the Song family. It can't be. Why is Zhang Qianling stalling for time to close the case? Why else do they need a thorough investigation? And so everything is clear. The killer is Wu Malin, period. He will give his head that it is 100%er. But Song Qingyan notes that he had better contact his mentor Tao Yingu. A blood debt can only be washed away with blood. If she doesn't exist, none of the Jai family will be able to stop him. They will all come to an end. Sometime later, after the police have left, Lin Fei goes out with Jai Yao Guang on the street and invites her to play a chess game with him. She shyly notes that she is not very good at chess. Suddenly, someone's car drives into their yard again. Song Hao, who is driving, furiously screams for them all to die. Then he crashes into this particular coffee table and laughs with blood dripping down the whistle. It's all over. That's where the road is. They deserve it. His grandfather will not give them peace. He will bury them. Tao Yingu, who is sitting on the seat next to him, asks him to wait in the car. He will now deal with them. But suddenly Hao looks to the side and sees that Fei has appeared in front of him and is holding Yao Guang in his arms. He strictly orders him to come out and attracts him with the help of his ability. Song Hao flies towards him and realizes that he cannot control his body. Is he really human? Lin Fei grabs him by the throat and slams him hard onto the ground, causing Hao to bleed from the mouth. But a loud knock is heard nearby due to the fact that a Niu is kicking down the car door. Fei notices this and creates a protective dome in which this door crashes. Tao Yingu threatens him, get out of the car, he must let him go, or he will grind him into powder. There will not be a wet spot left of him. Lin Fei kicks Song Hao, why does he fly to the side? And turning to Ying asks who he is to talk to him in such a tone. He immediately activates a fiery fist and jumping towards him the keys are that he is finished. But Fei punches him at the same moment and tells him to disappear. Hao tries to crawl to Tao Ying and whispers, Mentor. He, looking at Lin Fei, clarifies, Is he a teacher? But he turns over his shoulder and asks again, Teacher? What a worthless title. Song Hao and Yingu heard this, and their thoughts converged. For him, even the rank of teacher sounds petty. Is he even normal? Fei at this moment, with the help of his magic, collects the chairs that were broken and notes that the poor thing should quickly apologize and get out of here. After placing one chair for him, one for Jai Yao Guang, he adds, otherwise he can change his mind, it will be too late. Tao Yingu get up and stand in front of him, bows and apologizes, it was like a clouding. But the very next moment he extends his right hand in his direction, and shoots three needles, adding, there is no clouding, this freak must die. Three green rays hit Lin Fei's chest, and Yinu shouts joyfully laughing, well, what will the idiot do about it now? Will he show off again? and he has already been struck by a hundred of his poisonous needles, he cannot live. But he clarifies as if nothing had happened. This is how he uses meridian acupuncture. Gao Guang is still watching with him, frozen in horror, and Tao Yingu is wondering what? Not only does he know the name of the technique he used, but also why is he so calm? Shifu personally tempered these needles for 49 days in a row. The teacher would definitely not be able to withstand such a blow. Suddenly Hao approaches him and says with difficulty, the mentor should let him finish this guy personally. Inu immediately agrees, great, now he can't move anyway, so you can do whatever you want with him. But Song Hao sharply points his hand at Jai Yao Guang and explains that he has a better idea. Then he grabs her by the wrist and shouts that he will mock her right in front of Lin Fei. She screams for him to let him go. Tao Yinu laughs again and says that my friend can enjoy himself. But literally one moment later, Hao's arm turns out to be broken, and he screams heart-rendingly from the surging pain. Fei appears in front of him and asks the question, does he want to enjoy? Now he will give him true pleasure. Then he hits Song Hao on the leg, and they also break it. He hangs even louder, and Inu backing away exclaims that this is impossible. He was pierced by hundreds of poisonous needles, unable to move. But Lin Fei, with the help of magic, concentrates three needles in his hand and clarifies, are we talking about these needles? Even if there are even 1,000 hundreds, this poison is not at all scary to him. Imu immediately runs away. They finally shout, if only there were a forest, but there would be firewood, they will see each other again. At the same time, he notes that this guy is too strong. He is not his rival. He needs to ask Sifu for help. But Fei, shooting needles at him, clarifies, is he already leaving? They pierce Tao Yingu's body, and he falls to the ground with blood flowing from his mouth and asks, Did he damage his channels? Lin Fei scornfully says that he should be glad that at least he didn't kill him. 
Then he goes to Song Hao, who is trying to somehow get up and screams not to touch him. But blue discharges appear around Fei, and he explains that since he was used, she wanted to let him live. But now he is ready to change his mind and decide his life. Suddenly Jai Yao Guang approaches him from behind and hurries to clarify, although Hao is not a good person, but if Lin Fei kills him, then the real criminal will achieve his goal, right? He will hear it stop and say, okay, Song Hao can take his mentor and get out of here. When they barely hold on to each other and leave, Fei, sitting down, tells her that he did not thank her for letting him go, most likely, he will consider her hypocritical. But Yao Guang notes that Song Lanshan and her grandfather have known each other for decades, she should still have some sympathy. Does he think she's too kind? Using magic to bring order to the destroyed courtyard, he explains that for such people, life and death do not carry much meaning. Kindness is wonderful, only people like them do not deserve her kind attitude. They will come back and try to harm her again. Jai Yao Guang understands, which means he lets Song Hao go to teach her a lesson. Lin Fei at this moment also thinks that if it weren't for her excessive kindness, Yao Guang's misfortune would not have happened 3,000 years ago. But after that, she still clarifies, by the way, he didn't initially feel the poison. Then why did he pretend that he couldn't move? Fei replies that he thought it was interesting, doesn't she think so? She is shocked and asks again, is it interesting? Is he out of his mind? But Lin Fei, looking at the sky with sadness, explains that she must believe him. If she lives for 200 million years, this world will seem incredibly boring to her. After a while, when Song Hao returns home with Tao Yingu, with a cast on his arm and leg, Song Qingyun shouts in bewilderment, what happened to them? Wu Mullen seems to have been arrested. But he naturally explains that it's all because of stupid Lin Fei. He is much stronger than her. In Yu, hitting the armrest of the sofa with his fist, adds, he destroyed his channel. He will not rest until he kills this madman. He humiliated his medical abilities. Now he has only one road, namely to the next world. He will call Sifu now. He must finish off this Fei. The phone screen shows an emergency message painted in bright colors. Hot news, the main news of the country. First, the perfect sage Tao Kayan will soon arrive in Lotus City. He demands that Lin Fei apologize within three days. Secondly, Kayan insists that the eldest daughter Jai come to the police station to confess and be detained, otherwise the entire Jai family may suffer. Thirdly, when the absolutely sage Tao Kayan arrives in the city, he is really willing to do this to the Jai family. Fei, reading this, grinned and thought, the last headline is just something. Then suddenly Jai Yao Guang enters the room, holding a tablet in his hands, shouting, This is just chaos. Does this Kayan even understand the law? Fei notes that the guarantee of law depends on actual force. This man is not afraid of ordinary firearms. Does she think he cares about following the laws? Then she asks, hopefully, does he have any plan? But he crosses his arms and answers in a relaxed manner, no. Yao Guang asks in shock, what? Lin Fei explains that in order to fight people like him, you don't have to think too much. If Tao Kayan dares to come, he will destroy him. The main news of the day appears on the internet again, namely Fei's quote, if Kayan dares to come, he will destroy him. 666 comments appear under this post. The demon Ashur irritably writes that he is just an arrogant fool. The girl under the nickname Dark Starry Sky in her eyes also writes, you just have to look at this person. He dared to say such a thing about the perfect sage Tao Kayan. He is a real idiot. He has more than just to live. Users with Nick the Devil notes that it seems to him that this guy is just crazy. How could you challenge Kayan himself? Online service 24 hours adds that this guy is probably supported by Teacher Lin, which is why he is so fearless and confident in his abilities. Song Hao, having read the news, throws his phone back with irritation and shouts how this stupid Lin Fei infuriates him. The perfect sage Tao Kayan, sitting opposite him, asked who Master Lin was. Is there a complete disorder among the masters of martial art of the secondary Lotus City? Now what? Any fool can proudly call himself a teacher. How must inform everyone that he is calling all the masters of Lotus City. In two days, he will be in Daojian City. All families should also be notified, and those who dare not come will be given a personal visit. Song Hao, hearing this, wonders, does Sifu want to say that he will gather together all the martial arts masters of Lotus City? Afterwards, he clarifies what he means when he said about all families, including the Bai family, which has two teachers, and even the Yi family from King Cheng Mountain. Kain gets up from the sofa and, fingering his long gray braid between his fingers, asks what three insignificant teachers can do for him. 
only Hal must remember that the king, Bai and Jai families must be present there. If he deals with them, isn't it easy to guess who will get all their wealth and benefits? Of course, Song Hao will get it all. He immediately falls from the sofa to his knees on the floor and screams, he is very grateful to Sifu. Sometime later, when Fei was sitting in the courtyard of the Jai family's house or browsing the social network, he came across the sensational news of the day. The perfect sage Tao Kayan challenges Lin Fei to a battle, which must be attended by all the masters of the Lotus City. And the text, whoever dares to disobey and not come will have a great meeting with the sage. After reading this, he wonders why make so much noise around this event. Who wants to die in front of a huge crowd? He wanted to own everything quietly, but why is it so difficult? At this moment, Hao drives into the courtyard of the house in a wheelchair, pointing her finger at him and shouting, his Sifu Kayan said that if Fei independently cuts his channels and asks for his forgiveness, then the sage will be able to spare him. But he only contemptuously tells him to get out of here. From the tall and menacing silhouette that appeared behind him, energy emanates that almost blows away Song Hao and Tao Yingu, who follows him, he tries to say something, but due to the huge flow he fails. Inyu immediately carries him away in a wheelchair and screams, only Shifu can deal with him, he should leave. Hao finally adds that Lin Fei only has a couple of days left to have fun. Even when they leave, his phone lying on the table rings. He looks at the screen and sees that little Zhang is calling him. Picking up the phone, Fei asks if there is any progress. Tianling says that processing the volumes of information they receive requires enormous strength, the computer's recognition functions are limited, and they have problems with high-quality data analysis. Therefore, they can only use human resources for this. Now, because of this, complete chaos is happening in the entire area. Lin Fei get up to his seat, exclaims that he only asked them to collect data from the surveillance cameras. Okay, he'll be here now. After a while, when he actually arrives, the boss, greeting his departure, thinks, I wonder who the boss is waiting for. He decided to personally meet this man, maybe the richest man in the Southwest. When Lin Fei gets out of the car and heads towards the entrance of the building, he immediately orders Zhang Chanling to show him all the materials they found. He obediently answers, okay, the Celestial should follow him. A policeman who was passing by at that moment and saw this scene wondered who this young guy was. When he doesn't enter the office, two men with pronounced bruises under their eyes, sitting near the computer, say in surprise, Chief Zhang. Fei, seeing them, wonders how long these two have been awake. Then he announces that they should leave. Tianling immediately turns to them and says loudly, they have worked hard, now they can go and rest. The police immediately leave, kneading the stiff parts of their bodies along the way. Lin Fei sits on one of the chairs and asks to display all the recordings on all available monitors. Zhong Tianling clarifies in surprise, there are 16 monitors here, is the celestial being sure of this? but he only adds that the playback speed also needs to be increased by 36 times. When all his conditions are fulfilled, he sits down in front of the monitors and closes his eyes. Energy rays diverge from him in different directions. After a few moments, Faye's eyes widen, and with a frown, she asks to slow down the recording on those seven monitors. Tianling, pressing the keyboard buttons, clarifies, are there any problems? But he only explains that one of the images needs to be zoomed in. The still image shows the nightmare in a white coat, white hat, black sunglasses, and long blonde locks of hair. Lin Fei explains that he saw this man three times. The second time he entered the building opposite the Song family's wedding, he was more than sure that he was trying to find Song Lanshan's room, and is now going to the toilet in the shopping center. This is the third time. He's also willing to bet that the dark glasses hide the woman's makeup. Then he mentally adds, obviously this person knows about the features of the government's facial recognition system, so he used the easiest way to hide his appearance. He did well, he's smart. Zhang Tianling, after listening to him, is surprised. Where did he see this man for the first time? Fei replies that he first saw him on King Cheng Mountain, and at that time he was not hostile, so he did not pay attention to him. Tianling announces that he will immediately order a file on this person to be found. At the same time, he mentally notes that the celestial being is simply an incredible person. How does his brain work? He was able to remember the person he accidentally encountered. But Lin Fei explains that there is unlikely to be a file on a criminal like him. So they better try to track him down using the city's recognition system. They can't leave the rest to him. He naturally agrees, okay. After some time, crowds of people gathered in the square called Coat Dazer. Song Hao bows to Tao Kayan, who is sitting on the throne, 
but does not say that everything is in place. But no Fei, should he go in search of Teacher Lin? But Zhang interrupts him and exclaims, anyway at the teacher, if this man dares to come, he will smear him against the wall. They can start. How bows and does not answer. Okay, after he turns to the people and begins a speech, he is happy to greet the elders of his colleagues. Suddenly, Bai Zhan interrupts him and asks contemptuously, does he think that with his insignificant cultivation level, he is allowed to perform in front of the strongest masters of Lotus City? He should get out of here immediately, and Tao Kain should appear in person. Song Hao grits his teeth in irritation, but Kain also adds that the guy should move away. Since people ask, he cannot refuse them. The next moment, he suddenly rises sharply from his place and, pushing off the ground, jumps high. Landing on the stage in front of the audience, he begins his speech. Everyone already knows why he invited all of them here. If they are ready to accept his leadership and join him as the founder of medicine, many benefits await them. There will be enough miracle pills for everyone who joins him. People listening to him became surprised. A girl in a pink fursuit and pink hat asked puzzledly, the founder of medicine. I heard that then the famous doctor and miraculous healer Hua Chuo tried to do this for two days and two nights, but he never succeeded in becoming the founder of medicine. The monk next to her agreed, that's right, Tao Yingu was only able to achieve such results thanks to the founder's miraculously effective pills. The man behind him adds with a smile, after Song Lanshan became seriously ill when he was 60 years old, it was the founder's pills that saved him from death. A brunette sitting on a chair in a white jacket, with his arms crossed, repeated mockingly, the founder. Another elderly gray-haired man noted that he did not really need any miracle pills. He was already at an advanced stage. But in you explained that they are all masters of the art of war, so whoever disagrees must prove his opinion in battle. He won't insist on joining with someone who can defeat him. The second teacher of the Bai family, Bai Baju, stood up and asked, well, should they check the words of the perfect sage? When Jai Yao Guang and Lin Fei approached the stage and saw the battle taking place, she noted that it seemed that something had already begun there. At this time, Baju created a protective dome. She immediately noted, this is the second teacher and his protective aura. There is a rumor that even a bullet cannot penetrate his defense. But Fei notes that with all this, he will soon come to an end. Yao Guang asked in bewilderment, What? Bai Baju, jumping up and swinging, shouts that Kayan is only at the level of a teacher, so he should not try to underestimate their Bai family. But he, standing calm and not moving at all, answers that the teacher level is divided into high and low, and Baju is still much weaker than him. When he lands and tries to attack Tao Kayan, his fists hit the protective dome, from which only a small smoke comes out after the series of blows is completed. He steps back and wonders what. What else is this? They are on the same level of strength with him, but why didn't he manage to break through his protective shell? The dome disappears and Kayan, who had a luminous silhouette of protective armor, turned to Bai Baju and approximately exclaimed, he must get out of here. With these words, he sent a blow to the side, due to which he was thrown back and blood began to flow from his mouth. The people he flew past tremble at what happened. The woman in the red dress notes in shock, the teacher from the Bai family was defeated with the first blow. The rest of the men add, perfect sage Tao Kayan is really that strong, that even this family could not cope. How scary it seems that today, the perfect sage will gather all the best masters of Sichuan under his wing. Well, we immediately scream joyfully and spread our arms to the sides and exclaim, whoever is with him will prosper here, whoever is against him will perish, who will be the next to oppose him. But suddenly Sun Hao comes up to him and points his finger to the side and explains that Lin Fei has come. Then Tao Kain also points his fingers at him and clarifies, is it him? A complete non-entity must bow at his feet three times, and he will spare him. When Fei, together with Jai Yao Guang, calmly walked towards him, the people he passed by angrily said after him, in fact, he is a very brave guy. He escaped from the city, still came here, to his own death. Looks like this guy is going to have a hard time. Doesn't anyone think this is weird? Just look at his fearless, unflappable appearance, and how do those around him think that Teacher Lin has come with him? When Lin Fei comes closer, he turns to Kayan and says that he has not yet perfected his protective shell of the five elements. Since he wants to say goodbye to life so badly, then fine. Another gray-haired man, drawing a sword with a shiny blade from behind his back, adds, How does the sage Tao look at entering into mortal combat with another of his younger comrades? Jian must refuse to show such skill to the untalented him. 
Tao Kain again activates his protective energy armor to say that he has long heard about the first class ball master of Teacher Yi from King Cheng Mountain. It seems that today he will have the opportunity to witness it with his own eyes. But Yi sharply directs blue streams of energy at him and exclaims, he is to blame. But Kain, easily reflecting this, notes contemptuously, it seems that this is all that the teacher is capable of. After his armor turns red, and creating fiery tongues in his hands, he laughs angrily and shouts, fire. Then he jumps forward and, swinging, shouts that teacher he gets what he deserves. But he, trying to hide behind his sword, realizes that this is a blow that cannot be avoided. The next moment, Tao Kain attacks him with a stream of flames, and the scene is reset. Having gotten rid of one opponent, he loudly announces that, apparently, the masters of Lotus City are so weak that they cannot withstand even one blow. Teacher Lin must come out. Lin Fei, helping Yi up, clarifies, was he looking for him? The young people start whispering again, is he really brainless? Now he must call his teacher at breakneck speed, why is he clowning around? Even the Yi and Bai families are not Kayan's rivals, who is this guy deceiving? But Fei looks first at the two guys who are helping Teacher Yi and asks them to take good care of their Shifu. When John approaches him, he puts his hand on his shoulder and warns him he is not Lin's teacher, he must be careful and not get into trouble. The man with white locks also approaches him and agrees, right? The guy will still have time to contact his teacher, he will help him gain time. Lai Zhu, who was also present there, displeasedly crossed her arms and asked, what kind of show did he put on here? Could it be that by deceiving everyone around him, he also believed that he was a good master? But after these words, King Fen grabs her hand and shouts at her to watch her language. She must speak politely to the saint. Lin Fei, having passed all these people and stepped onto the stage in front of Tao Kayan, explains that if he is talking about Teacher Lin, who taught everything to Wu Molin, then it is him. Tao agrees to close his eyes, okay, it looks like the fame of the teacher is too exaggerated, if he was even afraid to show up here in person and sent the guy to die. But in response to this Lin Fei clarifies, he is so weak, is it okay if he gives him only three attempts? A man without outerwear, but in armor, pointing his fingers forward asks, this guy is crazy, right? The girl next to him with red lipstick on her lips and a hat with bunny ears, also crossing her arms, is wondering what school he came here from. A guy with underwear on his head calls on the phone and asks, Dr. Wang, there's one patient here from their hospital. The doctor asks where he is. He escaped, and therefore will not tell everything for now. At this time, Jai Lai Zhu looked at Jai Yao Guang and wondered, has she also gone crazy? Otherwise, why would she come to certain death? What? Is she really that stupid? Then the battle begins, and Tao Kayan, having activated the palm spell, Beautiful Landscape, rushes forward screaming. The guy has completely lost his fear, but he will definitely remember this for a long time. With these words, he crashes into Lin Fei, remove his palms from his chest. But without reacting to this, he says mockingly, Didn't he eat porridge at all today? What is this? Kayan wonders, what is this? But suddenly, he jerks his hand back and screams, how painful it is. Fei explains that this is the reciprocal force of his own blow. He has not done anything yet. He has two more attempts. Lai Zhu, seeing this, covers his mouth with his hands and exclaims, is she in a dream? Bai Zhan also asks, he didn't even use a protective shell. Was he able to block the strike with his palm? One of Teacher Yi's assistants exclaims in addition to them, is it really that he is the same Teacher Lin? Tao Kayan is indignant and, activating his defense, shouts, he is Lin's teacher. This is for him for looking down on him. Then he jumps up and, swinging his right hand, shouts that the fool gets what he deserves. But when he tries to hit him on the shoulder, Lin Fei quite calmly notes that he can try even harder. Bai Baju, sitting on a chair at this time and squinting from the pain he recently experienced, turns to the brunette and notes that one blast wave of the protective shell of the five elements knocked the ground out from under his feet. This guy is really unusual. Kain does not stop, and, directing a stream of energy at Fei, shouts, he forced him to do this. Fire! The wretch must die. When he approaches with an attack, a bright, fiery explosion is heard. The spectators, backing away, screamed, how blinding the eyes are. What happened there? The perfect sage Tao Kain is capable of such amazing performances. What a horror, the guy definitely died. When Kain opens his eyes amid the smoke, it turns out that he is simply holding his hand on Fei's head. He quite calmly announces the third attempt. People are horrified and screaming, this can't be happening. 
At this moment, Jean bashfully realizes that this man is incredible. He mistook him for an ordinary security guard, and also said that he didn't like him. Tao Kayan frowns and thinks decisively he needs to finish everything, otherwise he will be fried today. But this guy can't start an attack. Then he directs a stream of liquid at Lin Fei and shouts, water. Then he laughs loudly, you idiot. He is imprisoned in his water shackles. He definitely cannot get out of there. He is finished. Song Hao, clenching his fists, exclaims joyfully, It's not for nothing that their Sifu is a great warrior. Tao Yingu, standing nearby, adds that Fei has greatly overestimated his strength, so no one will be sorry if he dies. Kayan turns to him and mockingly asks, His protective shell of the five elements is unshakable. Does the guy think he can break through it with his finger? But when Lin Fei does just that, he is horrified, and Fei announces that his three attempts have expired, now he will kill him. Then a bright glow appears at the end of his index finger, and Tao Ying is surrounded by blue energy clusters. He does not give up and, activating his armor, says gold. At the same time, he confidently thinks that he can easily withstand such a reception. But the very next moment his armor cracks, and he screams in pain. When he flies to the side, the audience begins to whisper again. One trick. He only used one trick. Could he really be that same Master Lin? It's simply incomprehensible to the mind. The two greatest teachers who held the Lotus City in their hands were simply defeated in a second. Tao Yingu, running up to Tao Kayan, fearfully says, Shifu. Song Hao also helping him up adds, is he okay? But connecting two index fingers and activating thin green streams, with the last of his strength, he says, no, he cannot die. Natural awakening energy of trees. But suddenly he coughs up blood, and Lin Fei, who approaches, explains that he doesn't have to try. He destroyed his cultivation. Inu immediately yells at him that he can't kill them. They are the Founder's people. Isn't he afraid that this person will grind him into powder? But Fei relaxedly explains that he didn't say he was going to kill them, Tao Kayan did it on his own. And also, they must hand them over to the boss, if he tries to do something to him, he will cut all of them into school. Unexpectedly, Kayan coughs for the last time, and when blood runs down his face, and his open eyes do not react to anything, how and Yinu scream in horror Shifu. The man with white streaks of hair thinks, this guy is single-handedly threatening the ancient founder. Teacher Yi, who still relies on one of his students, also mentally notes that within the school, Tao Kayan has always been one of the elders. He doesn't compare to the top influencers. King Fen understands the gesture with delight. Only Holy Lin can show such behavior. He is a real god-man. When he leaves with Jai Yao Guang, she notes that he looks very cool. Then Fei asks hopefully, right? Maybe she has some feelings for him. But she blushes slightly and turns away and answers, of course not. He reassures her she should not rush to answer and think carefully. But suddenly Yao Guang stops and turns to him and notes that she was wondering something about the so-called teacher level that they were talking about. What does this mean for him? Lin Fei explains that a teacher is just the beginning of the journey. One might say it is the basis for becoming a great teacher. For him, the teacher is no different from an insect. Hearing this, she repeats in bewilderment, an insect... But Fei turns to her and says that he has a question for her, which member of the Bai family does she think could offend her? Jai Yaoguang ponders out loud, there is no enmity between her and the Bai family, so she thinks that they would not do this. But if he asks, he definitely has some thoughts on this matter. Fei notes with a smile, yes, then they will wait a little, who knows, maybe this person will show up. When night falls, he stands on the balcony in the Jai family's house and looks ahead, reasoning, today's events should make a lot of noise, the killer from the dark night should be very wary, he will obviously want to escape. If Zhang Chanling fails to deal with this, he will send other people. Suddenly the phone in his inner jacket pocket rang, and he took it out and put it to his ear and asked, Does little Zhang have any news? Tianling explains that they were informed from the local government office in Pixian County that there is a killer hiding in Kingna village. They have already surrounded the house he is in. Lin Fei then jumps over the balcony and replies that he will be there soon. After a while, the policeman, slightly peeking out from cover and looking up, shouts in bewilderment, the boss should look there. What is this? Is this that person? But Zhang Tianling orders him to shut up and remember that he didn't see anything. Fei lands on the terrace of the third floor of the building. He goes inside, and about a dozen sharp spear tips immediately fly in his direction. But they all crash into an invisible protective barrier. Nightmare, peeking around the corner with irritation, thinks the policeman didn't move, then who came in. 
but the very next moment he understands he is here, he's behind him. Then the nightmare waves its hand and stops Lin Fei, announces that he has come to take his pathetic life, and is thrown back by the nightmare, causing him to break through the window and fly out. But Lin Fei speaks briefly in time, he must freeze. He really stops hanging in the air above the ground and exclaims with the last of his strength. The transition of internal strength to the outside, killing through space, he is a great master. Fei approaches him irritably and asks why they constantly belittle his abilities. He's only keeping him in this position because he has some more questions, so they better not waste time. Nightmare mockingly notes that if Lin Fei wants to ask him about something, then he will ask a question. Why does a person like him, capable of ruling the whole world and achieving world domination, prefer to be around one girl? Fei explains that the pleasure of this world has not aroused any interest in him for a long time. He only needs this one woman. He has nothing to do with world domination. Besides, he really believes that a great master can do whatever he wants. Then why are people who have received even greater enlightenment all calm and serene? The nightmare hears this with horror and says, Are there really many such people? But Lin Fei interrupts him and tells him to answer him, who is now at the head of the Dark Knight organization. Well, he doesn't calm down and says that he doesn't know, but he wants to ask one last question. He knows what art is. Fei sternly orders him to answer. But Nightmare takes out a small pulse with a single red button, presses it, and exclaims, Art he calls that beautiful moment when life ends and death occurs. The next moment, a bright explosion occurs on the third floor of the building, causing the police to scream in horror. That guy is still there. They must call the fire truck immediately. The criminal exploded, but Zhang Qianling interrupts them and explains the matter with his hand. They must stop. No one can move them. A man with a short haircut is trying to answer him something, but Qianling puts his hand on his shoulder and looks forward and asks him to look at it too. Then a man's surprised cry is heard. What is this? At the sight of the explosion, through a veil of smoke, a protective barrier of the correct shape is weakened. The nightmare looks back and doesn't understand how this is possible. It should not be. He should have died with her. They had to die. Lin Fei mockingly asks, is this what he calls art? He can easily kill him, then resurrect him again. Did he understand that? Nightmare puts his palm to his face. When tears flow down from his face, he finally announces that the guy can ask questions. He will tell everything he knows. Only he asks to let him commit suicide on his own. Fei immediately asks who sent him. Should he say the name of the person who hired him? Nightmare hands him a pink phone with the name Hai Mengui written on the screen and explains that he does not know the name of the customer, but this girl instructed him to complete this task. She is also very strange. She hides something about her and the man Tolo spouses. She kept Bai Zhan in the dark and lied to him herself. He only knows about this. Lin Fei, after listening to him, says thoughtfully, it means that the conflict between Jan and Wu Malin is also their work. Okay, it will give him the opportunity to commit suicide. After that, he lowers the protective dome with him to the ground and adds, the guy can handle everything on his own. Nightmare hands him a folded small piece of paper and notes that if he wants to find Mengui, he should start with Bai Zhan, let him look at the materials stored on this disc, then Yan will do whatever he wants for him. After a couple of minutes, Zhang Chanling approaches them and exclaims, Celestial being, is this a nightmare? Fei calmly agrees, La. Then in the next moment, he punches him in the face with all his might and shouts. He finally caught him. Now he will answer for becoming the granddaughter of his former boss. The nightmare, spitting out a broken tooth and wiping his mouth, replies that he admits his guilt. It was he who framed Wu Moling. He also killed Song Qingyun. Lin Fei, leaving, finally asks him to record his testimony and film it on a video camera. Zhang Chanling agrees, okay. When the police handcuff the nightmare and lead him to the car, he turns around and asks if he can believe his words. Fei, without answering his question, tells the men that once they take his testimony, they can do whatever they want with him. At the same time, he carefully looks at the phone screen and wonders who hired Hai Mengui. In the evening of the same day, it was a dark night at the headquarters of the organization. Only some lights were on in some windows. Lin Fei, entering one of the rooms and finding that it was empty, noted, of course, Mengui did not trust the nightmare. It seems that she was able to get it only through her beloved Bai Zhan. The next day, early in the morning, Fei arrived at the Bai family's estate. After getting out of the car and looking around, he wondered in surprise, does the Bai family live here? But suddenly his phone rang, and he took it and asked what was wrong with little Zhang. Tianling announced that the nightmare had confessed to all the crimes, 
then committed suicide under a gardenia branch. In addition, the Song family has finally moved to Lotus City. He answered completely calmly as he completed the castle. He understood everything. Near the entrance to the estate, he was met by two men. The brunette asked. They didn't know about his visit. How could they help him? But Lin Fei, passing by them and heading towards the front door, noted that he needed to talk alone with Jan. A few minutes later, when he came down to Fei, who sat down on one of the chairs, he asked if the teacher wanted to talk to him. He immediately said that he would not beat around the bush. Does he know Hai Mengui from the Dark Knight? He fearfully replied that she was his love and his benefactor. She risked her life to save him. They want to get married without the permission of their parents. She has a special position in society. His father and uncles will be against their relationship, so they hide what is happening between them. Then Lin Fei unexpectedly asks him, she has repeatedly tried to kill someone dear to him, what should he do now? Bai Zhan is shocked when he hears this, but still says in a trembling voice that Mengui saved him, if he leaves the house to call her to account, then the teacher better take his life, only he begs him, he should not touch his family, he would never be able to hand over Hai Mengui. Fei suddenly noted with a smile that it was not bad, he liked him. Jan looks up at him in confusion and asks, what does this mean? He simply hands him a complicated piece of paper and repeats, he liked him, so he wants to tell him the real truth. Most likely Mengui is not as good as he imagines her to be. Bai Zhan picked up the piece of paper and opened it, saying that this is the password for the online disk. What's there? Lin Fei said seriously, the truth about her. After a while, when John opened the online disk through the computer and found out everything Fei, sitting next to him, explained that in fact, Hai Mengui is a married woman. Her husband is the leader of the Dark Knight organization, Man Toyuo. And he was just a toy in her hands. Bai Zhan asks, hopefully, is he joking? Lin points his palm at the laptop and suggests he can listen to everything. After a couple of moments, Jan turns on the audio recording, and someone's female voice comes from there. Jan is very talented. It will be great if they can use him for personal purposes. Hearing this, he realizes that it belongs to Hai Mingui. But then the man clarifies, this guy has only reached the average level of skill. What's remarkable about that? She insists, he is so young, already at the middle stage. Doesn't he think that in the future Bai Jan can become a real teacher or founder? Everything has its time, doesn't it? The interlocutor agrees, it sounds really good, however, she already has a plan, how to make it work on a dark night. Mengui explains that this Jan thinks primitively, like a child, he highly values justice and a sense of duty. She needs to do something good for him, sacrifice something, it will definitely become hers. The man is surprised. What? Was she really up to something interesting? She decided to become his benefactor? Hai Mengui agrees, namely, he will make us think that she risked her life for him. Bai Zhan, unable to listen to this, hits the laptop keyboard with his fist and shouts, Stop! But Lin Fei, with the help of his abilities, repaired the laptop and explains that this is not all. There is a video. Is he ready to watch it? Jan answers decisively, ready. Then he presses play and a video appears on the screen, which shows Mengui being hugged by a guy with long green strands of hair. Afterwards, they fall on the bed together, and she tenderly says, Dear, this time Bai Zhan, completely angry, breaks through the laptop screen with his hand and inserts it with the sofa, announces that he wants to deal with this personally. Fei, slightly surprised, but without showing it, clarifies, did his body stop after the injuries received in the battle with Wu Mullen? If they die together, this does not mean that he will wash away the shame. But Jan insists, even if they die together, he will still go there. He must handle this matter personally, and he is very grateful to the elder for this opportunity. Lin Fei then asks him to come closer to him. With average skill, he cannot win, and he knows one secret technique. He approaches warily and clarifies what. Fei sends a beam from his hand straight to Bai Zhan's forehead, causing him to scream. Afterwards, sitting back down on the sofa, he asks in bewilderment, what did the teacher do? Lin Fei explains that now he looks like he has internal injuries, he now has a 50% chance of winning. John put his hand to his chest and noted that he really felt better. Using various medicines, they tried to enlarge his wounds. The father resorted to feeding on internal forces. Half a month passed, but no improvement followed, and then he healed him in a second. Immediately getting up from the sofa and kneeling in front of Fei, Bai Zhan sincerely said that he was very grateful to the teacher. He can turn to him for his favorite errands. The Bai family will not forget his kindness, but Lin Fei stopped him, asked him not to rush into statements. He had better solve his problems first. 
After all, this time he would have to kill the man he loved very much. Chan, as if remembering her again, casting his eyes down, says, Hi, Mengui. But still, hitting the floor with his fist, he loudly says that he was just a doll for her. Why spread tenderness here? This night, he will break the vicious connection that connected them. Fei, watching his actions, wondered, is it a vicious relationship? In this world, it is precisely this that is most difficult to do. As evening falls, Jan sits on the roof of one of the unfinished buildings. When Mengui comes to him, she straightens a strand of hair and notes that so much time has passed, but he wanted to see her again. This is for the best, she just has one request for him. Then, hugging him from behind, she added that she wanted him to kiss her. But Bai Jan frowns and coldly asks why she deceived him. Hai Mengui laughingly asks who told him such nonsense. Well then, he takes out his phone and turns on the recording in which she can be heard earlier, saying that Jan is very talented. It would be great if he could be used for personal purposes. Mengui, hearing this, immediately reaches out with his hand to the stocking on her leg and says, It means it was a nightmare. It was he who told him. For that matter, there is no longer any need to keep him alive. With these words, she takes out a knife, but Bai Jan watches without moving as she makes a small scratch on his neck. Hai Mengui, noticing his reaction, wonders why he doesn't resist. He closes his eyes and sadly says he would be happy if she deceived him throughout his life. Since this is no longer possible, all he can do is accept death. At first she feels pity for him and wants to say something, but the very next moment, swinging her sword again, she screams, he can die. If Mantolo finds out about them, she still won't live. Suddenly a beam is shot at her, knocking the weapon out of her hand. Mengui backed away and asked who is there. Lin Fei comes out to them, who first approaches Jan, gives him a strong slap in the face and shouts, has he decided to lead him by the nose? Did he want revenge? He's a man, he should be tough. She doesn't love him, she just used him, he's a real wuss. After these words, Bai Jan regains his determination, and with tears in his eyes thanks the teacher, he knows what he must do. Jan stood up and pointed his fingers at Hai Mengui, and announced that from that day on, everything was over between them. But she only answered rudely, and who said that there was something between them? She simply used it to remove her personal needs. Afterwards, she again takes out another dagger and notes that since she can no longer use it, then there is no point in leaving him alive. Bai Jean immediately heads towards her and intends to use a blow of many fists, shouting that he has nothing more to say to her. He will kill her. She, throwing a dagger in his direction, asks mockingly, Today there are furious fists. Is he serious? Doesn't he remember? He showed her this move 1,000 times. He thinks it will work. Jan, gritting her teeth, asks, what can her insignificant knife do? Mengui exclaims in response, silver radiance. Blanket of swords. After her words, the weapon becomes several times larger, and all of it hits Bai Jian, causing him many cuts and wounding. When he falls on his back, she approaches him and asks if he knows what he was wrong about. He loved her enough for me, and this is his main mistake. With these words, she swings a dagger and plunges him into his heart. Jan screams in pain, but she suddenly says why is he so sure that she didn't love him? She loves Mantolo, and she loves him too. Initially she only wanted to use it, but then she became addicted to it. Bai Jan, standing up with the last of his strength, naturally wants to say something to her. But he is interrupted by Lin Fei, who has been sitting on the side all this time. He says with dissatisfaction, crossing his arms, their moral values are interesting of course. He immediately remembered one series. Hai Mengui irritably throws a knife at him and shouts that no one asked him at all. He takes the blow without resisting and disappears from view, giving the impression that he fell from the roof. But in fact, Fei is floating in the air and, having reflected the blow with the help of a protective field, notes that he will stay here for now and listen to what else she will tell him. Mengui again draws her attention to Jan and, placing his hand on her chest, clarifies he gave a reaction. Then he became her partner, right? She didn't ask him to do anything different. Why did he believe them? She killed so many people, but she only loved the two of them. He hears this. She asks him to stay with him, okay? Lin Fei, hearing this, says with a grin, these women. Bai Zhan is overcome by trembling, but he says through his teeth that this is nonsense. This is all a complete lie. But Hai Mengui turns slightly redder and begins to flirt with him, noting that no one can disturb them now. They better reconcile. John again tries to find what to answer, but she, approaching his face, announces that they better enjoy this moment. He will be her partner, and as soon as he needs her, she will immediately come to him. 
but Faye suddenly says with a sigh she can't listen to it anymore. Afterwards, he snaps his finger and announces that he has restored Baijan's internal channels and can now move. Immediately after this, a bright fiery glow actually began to emanate from him, causing him to scream. Mengui at first looked at him in bewilderment, and then jumped to the side and wondered what was going on. He is healed early, well how? Jan first finds himself in the air in a bright yellow sphere, and then, standing back on the ground, he screams, the crazy woman has no chance. She points the knives at him and mockingly says that he can try as much as he wants, he will still end up in one end. He will not escape because of her hands. But Bai Jan, jumping up and raising his fist, shouts that this time he will not lose. After he strikes, naturally the teeth utter hundreds of daring fists. Jan screams and a small shock wave appears from his blow, and when her vein breaks right in front of Hai Mengui's face, she exclaims, closing her eyes, how is this possible? But the next moment the shock wave overtakes her, she flies back and falls from the roof. But Bai Jan reacts quickly and runs up to her and shouts, he's holding her. With these words, he grabs her wrist. Her face is covered with bruises and scratches, but she still asks why he didn't let go of her hand. Jan, holding her with one hand and leaning the other on the brick wall nearby, replies that he doesn't know that. Mengui starts crying and answers for him because he is not ready to part with her, and she used him, ran away, and hurt him. But she didn't want it to turn out like this, but she really loved them both. He looks at her with the same regret and notes that they shouldn't have started all this. Hai Mengui admits this, yes, if he found out about everything, then Man Taluo will probably find out too. Even if he saves her, she still won't live. After that, she pulls his hand back and explains that then it would be better to do just that. Bai Jan, frightened by this, reaches after her and shouts, no. But looking at him for the last time, she understands that this is a punishment for her greed. When she fell, Lin Fei approached Jan, I noted. She got what she deserved. Does he think she deserved it? He turns to him with tears in his eyes with a trembling voice, trying to collect his thoughts and answer something, but Fei shows him an image of several people explains, he knows well what Bai Jan wants to say, but he should look here, they didn't die because of her. Does he think he didn't deserve to die? Jan is silent, and Lin Fei explains that he simply put an end to her activities. This is the cycle of human rebirths, but they, ordinary people, do not understand this. As he leaves, he also mentally notes that, after all, he also did not immediately understand this, having created such a terrible genius. But Bai Jian, bowing sharply and touching his forehead to the floor, shouts that he is begging Teacher Lin to take him as a student. He wants to spend many years under his leadership. Fei remembers a teenager who bowed in the same way and shouted that he was asking the teacher to take his students. Looking at Jan, he mentally notes that they are so similar to Lin Yuan. Then he too, like this guy, wanted to declare his abilities and shock the whole world. Afterwards, he still orders Bai Jian to stand up. Having heard this term, he asks with a smile and hope, does the teacher agree? He nods, and then Jan, standing up and making a respectful gesture, thanks him. Lin Fei again remembers the events from the past, and thinks that he hopes that this guy will not follow the same path, will not turn onto a crooked path like him. Bai Jian suddenly announces and takes the courage to ask the teacher. But Fei, leaving, interrupts him and explains, he understands everything. First it is necessary to clean up her body, then they can talk about everything else. Bowing again, he agrees, yes. After a while, when Jean manages to completely get there, he stands near the dead body of Hai Mengui and, holding a lit torch in his hand, mentally addresses her, they must say goodbye at this point. Afterwards, burning the wooden coffin along with her, he goes to Lin Fei who at that time is standing nearby in front of his car and explains that they cannot go. Fei sadly puts his hand into the inner pocket of his jacket and says, he doesn't even have anything to give Bai Jan as a welcome gift. Well, after throwing him a small white bottle, he notes, he can take this. This thing is called Gathering Kai. This is the only medicine that will help him achieve the after heaven. Jan enthusiastically clarifies, does the teacher want to say that this thing will help him become a founder? At the same time, he thinks that the gift for the teacher is incredibly chic. Lin Fei, opening the car door, tells him to get behind the wheel, and then follows this thing. As they drive through the city, Bai Zhan again repeats that the teacher is very generous. He appreciates him for this courtesy. But it is such an expensive thing, he cannot accept it. Fei notes with a bored look that everything is in order. He has an inordinate amount of such things. Jan, shocked, runs his words through her head again. There are too many of these things. 
But then he understands that the teacher simply decided to calm him down. He said that on purpose, only so that he would accept the teacher's gift with a calm soul. Lin Fei, at this time, is holding his head with his hand and looking out the window, thinking, by the standards of cultivation, this medicine is the most accessible and cheapest. Why is he so joyful? He still doesn't understand. He gave his students such a cheap gift. For sure, if someone finds out about this, there will be publicity. When they arrive at the Bai family's villa, Jan asks why the teacher didn't ask Hai Mengwai about Bai Anhua. Fei explains that he doesn't like unnecessary problems. Since the people from the Dark Knight tried to kill Yao Guang, then he will simply destroy them, and that's it. When Bai Zhan carefully closes the door of his room, he notes with hope that everyone is probably already asleep. Sitting on the bed and looking again at the white vessel, he notes that she is already calmly trying the medicine that the teacher gave him. Then he takes the red cap and inhales the aroma. He thinks that it is very calming. It is very pleasant, I wonder. Then what does the medicine taste like? Then he drips a few drops onto his tongue and, closing his eyes with hope, thinks, if everything is as the teacher said, then he will succeed in becoming a founder. Then he opens his eyes and mentally exclaims, what a strong energy. A further it concentrates until a bright glow like fire emanates from it. He feels the air take off and bright streams rush into his chest. Jan screams loudly at first, but then clenches his fists and exclaims, now he is the founder. This is truly a wonderful medicine. When morning comes, the day begins with cloudless weather. The bright rays of the sun shine through the windows of the Jai family's house, while Jai Yao Guang brushes his teeth, laughing cheerfully. Lin Fei, as usual, sitting on the street despite the playing board, is wondering what to do now. A black car drives up to their yard, and King Fen, who got out there, approaches Fei. Bowing, he announces that the founder has sent people with a message. Perhaps he's already heard about it. But he answers by placing a white chip on the playing field. He is ready to listen to everything. Fen says that they said that all the famous masters, that is, doctors of the Lotus City, must admit their guilt, and he must atone for his debt to Tal Kayan with blood. Otherwise, not only will the ashes from his mortal body be scattered to all four corners of the world, but the Jai family will also be completely destroyed. Lin Fei, making a move with a red stone, replies that if they want to meet with him, they must come in person. He is too lazy to do this. By the way, how is King Fen doing with preparing the medicine? He bashfully scratches the back of his head and explains that he is missing a few more elements. At this moment, he thinks, if he had known in advance, he would not have boasted to the Holy One. The raw materials for this medicine are indeed very difficult to find. But Fei, rising to his place, replies that it is not his fault. Most miracle cures are now almost impossible to find. He can go and visit his son in the hospital. If he's not mistaken, he only has 24 hours to live. Fen asks in fear, what? Why? But suddenly his phone rings, and the voice on the phone screams for him to come to the hospital quickly. His son has gotten worse. They soon arrive at the hospital. Entering the room, he does not see how King Fen's son is lying in a hospital bed and a huge amount of black cobwebs have grown around him. The doctor, carefully touching it, asks, What is this, after all? This is the black web. But when suddenly it eats away at his glove and his fingers turn red. The man screams in horror. This thing eats away the skin. Fen, turning to Lin Fei, almost crying, asks him to save his son. He says that this is the last stage of poisoning with spider venom. During these 24 hours, King Minju will be placed in the cocoon, will become a nutrient for the formation of poison. Then in this cocoon, it will no longer be his son, a black spider the size of a person. He goes to the founder, Minju lacks medicine, which can only be found there. As King Fen said, the founder is calling all the masters of Lotus City. He answers very tiredly, yes, they said so, and time is limited, only three days. Fei notes that he hopes the founder will not stoop to such a thing. Otherwise, he will have to destroy the last successor of Shen Shuang, the patron god of agriculture and medicine. After some time, Bai Zhan comes down into the hall to two men sitting on chairs. I announced that Fen just called him. He said that his teacher went to the founder alone. His father immediately gets up from the sofa and shouts, Teacher Lin decided to sacrifice his life to save the whole city. Jan clarifies in confusion, does his father want to say that his teacher, at the cost of his own life, wants to appease the founder, to save the lives of all the masters of the Lotus City? The man confirms this, exactly so. He did not suspect that the teacher not only has a high level of cultivation, 
but also high moral principles. Then Bai Jian, walking to the front door, shouts that he is also going to the founder. Master Lin showed the utmost generosity to him, he cannot sit with his hands folded. But his father hurries to stop him and explains that if they go, it will be all together. He must quickly contact Teacher Yi, everyone who cares must go to the founder and help Teacher Lin. But the next moment Yi appears in front of them with the little boy next to him and explains that he is already here. The teacher is a noble man, they cannot remain indifferent. A man putting on a white coat decisively says they should go. They are the five strong founders, why are they suddenly afraid of someone? He doesn't believe that the founder, relying only on the strength of his school, would dare to challenge the entire Lotus City. The School of Medical Medicine is a majestic structure at the foot of the mountain, like an ensemble of ancient architecture. This school was built on Lingju Mountain, near the Suwen Gorge. Lin Fei, approaching the entrance, raises his head up and thinks, if some travel agency had found this place, then the ticket price would probably be very high. But suddenly he looks ahead and sees a man and a teenage girl sitting on his knees with lifeless looks. Fei notes that it looks like the two have come to ask for help. 